it's the opening weekend for the Pitt Panthers as they take the field for the first time in 2017. The opponent today is one of the top teams in the FCS and a team looking to pull off an upset of their neighbors just 75 miles away. Youngstown State and Pitt next. watching the ACC on ESPN. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's time to kick off the college football season. Today, the Youngstown State Penguins make the short trip down the Pennsylvania Turnpike to battle the Pitt Panthers. Welcome you here to Heinz Field. Robert Lee and former Ohio State National Champion Dustin Fox with you. Fall-like weather here in the Steel City means it's time for college football. Dustin, both these teams looking to build off good seasons last year. Pitt lost a lot from a high-scoring 8-5 team. Youngstown State made it all the way to the FCS title game. Good to have football back in our lives. There's no question. You're right. It is like fall-like conditions downstairs. I was on the field as a former player the first week of the regular season. It gets you excited. And I know these coaches are excited. They played each other in high school all the way back their days in Youngstown. So this, this rivalry, it runs deep. Let's take a look at some key players in today's matchup. All eyes will be on Pitt quarterback Max Brown, the grad transfer from USC. Talk about leadership. This is a guy who's, who went four years at USC, was voted captain last year, started the first three games, got beat out by Sam Darnold, transfers here to Pitt, was also voted captain here at Pitt. So everybody's excited to see what Max Brown can bring to the table for this Pitt offense. And then you flip it across and take a look at Youngstown State. Well, they go as their quarterback goes as well. Hunter Wells started the last nine games of the, of the season last year, took them all the way to the FCS National Championship. They fall short to James Madison, but they're happy to have Hunter Wells back. They lost a bunch of guys on defense, and they lost their top two tailbacks, so they're going to need Hunter Wells. The two head coaches meeting before the game, as Dustin mentioned, both Youngstown natives. Youngstown State takes on Pitt, and it's coming up next. NHL.TV, the way to watch live hockey. Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, 65 degrees today. There was a lot of rain in the forecast. It looks like it's going to hold off till after the game. It is breezy, and it is cloudy and overcast here on this first Saturday in September. Bo Pelini, the head coach of Youngstown State, third season, 17 and 10, led them all the way to the FCS title game last year. Before that, seven years at Nebraska. Former Michigan State assistant Pat Narduzzi, the head coach of Pitt, also in his third season, 16 and 10. Youngstown State won the toss. They deferred to the second half. They will kick to start the game, and they will immediately put the most explosive player in the game back deep for Pitt. Yeah, Quadri Henderson back deep, one of the most explosive return men in the entire country, was an All-American last year. Not only is he a weapon on offense, but we get a chance to see him on this opening kickoff. Do you expect Youngstown to keep the ball away from him? He had four kick return <laughs> touchdowns last year. Led the country. Well, it's like you can kick it out of bounds on a kickoff, but you may want to go short to one of the up men. I'm with you. I, I, I would be in the, of the mindset to keep it away from number 10 because he is as dangerous as anybody in the entire country. As Dustin mentioned, preseason All-American as a kick return specialist. Zach Kennedy, the kicker for Youngstown State, tees it up at the 35-yard line. Football is back. College football on a Saturday afternoon in football country, the Steel City. Kick is away high. End over end kick will be taken by Henderson at the one. Henderson out past the 15 near sideline, 25, and a good return out near the 30-yard line. Pitt will go on offense first and 10. A nice little return here from Quadri Henderson, the opening kickoff of the game. A little surprised they decided to kick to him. It's a short kick. Decides to get outside, and pretty nice little return there to start this pit offense in pretty good position as we get a chance to take a look at Max Brown, the former USC quarterback. You look at his numbers from a season ago. Excited for a fresh start. The grad transfer played in three games last season, the first three. Started the first three games last season. 
Henderson in motion. It'll be a handoff for Olison. Hit at the line and fights his way forward out past the 30 to the 32. Well, there's one of our impact players, Quadri Henderson from the Pitt Panthers. We know what he can do on offense. And then for Youngstown State, one of their few returning starters from last year, Armand Delavade, their middle linebacker, the Mike linebacker, makes all the calls for this defense. Bo Pelini needs to have somebody smart and steady in the middle of that defense, and that's exactly what Armand Delavade brings to this Youngstown State defense. Like so many Penguins, a Pittsburgh native, West Allegheny High School, play action. Brown rolls out right. Brown throws incomplete near midfield. Overthrown, intended for Quadri Henderson. Test, test. Ah, there we go. Brown, as you okay. mentioned in the open, right, beaten out by Sam Darnold after three games last year. Played some tough defenses to start the season. Yeah, he did. And you think back to his opening start, right? He, he has to go to AT&T Stadium, Jerry's World, to play the number one team in the country, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Didn't have a great start. They decided to roll with him for the, for the first three games of the season. He has to face Stanford. Obviously, Alabama, two of the top defenses in the entire country. And, you know, Coach Clay helped decided to make a change. And they went to Sam Darnold, and the rest is history. On third and six, out of the gun, throw into the flat for Olison. Has blockers in front of him on a first down, out past the 40, breaking tackles across midfield. Olison, submarine to the 40 yard line, a pit first down. A big back, 6'2, 230 from Niagara Falls. Oh, this will be a Sports Center top 10. Quadri Ellison in space. Jalen Powell, can't close your eyes, buddy. You got to come through and take out those thigh boards. He you closed your eyes, and Quadri Ellison decides to go airborne. Hurdles the defender and just pit a big gainer. Moves it into YSU territory, first and 10 from the 37. Henderson on the jet sweep right and tripped up inside the 35. Tackle made by Lee Wright, a fifth year senior. Well, that's an area where Quadri Henderson can also be effective in this offense. Not only is he a terrific receiver and returner, but last year had five rushing touchdowns. So they're going to use him a lot on some of those jet sweeps. Had a chance to talk to Coach Narduzzi, Narduzzi yesterday uh, about what Henderson brings to this offense. And certainly, he is dynamic. He wants to develop his game into more of a receiver, but, man, you see him carry the football as well. Averaged over 10 yards a carry last year. Olison bounces it to the outside, trying to turn the corner. And a good tackle in the open field. Solomon Warfield, the strong safety, brings him down short of the first down. Well, that's a really, really good tackle from Solomon Warfield, who's getting his first start here today. Allison on the little toss sweep, steps up inside the left tackle there. And here comes uh, Warfield out of nowhere to knife him down. Warfield, a senior from Lorraine, Ohio. And another third down situation here. Pitt converted earlier this drive. Just underway here from Heinz Field. Hit eight and five a season ago, five and three in the ACC Coastal Division. Handoff Darren Hall. He will be close to the first down at the 27. Depends on the spot. It is enough for a first down. I need to measure that. Let me take a look at this. One of the things you're going to see in this offense, though, is. A lot of different bodies rotating in at the tailback position. We'll talk later as we go, but we all know James Conner and the story there. Terrific tailback moved on to the Pittsburgh Steelers, so now you have to replace a couple thousand yard rusher from a year ago. They do give them the first down. Henderson in motion, he'll get the handoff. Running left, has blockers along the sideline to the 20. Shake and bake for a gain of about eight. <laughs> You know what's funny ab about seeing these reverses from Quadri Henderson early in this game is last week in the press conference, some of the reporters here locally were asking Coach Narduzzi about what to expect from the offense this week. Would you hold some things back? Everyone knows that they have to play Penn State next week, Oklahoma State in a couple weeks, and we kind of joked about, well, oh, maybe a little bit vanilla. Well, not so vanilla <laughs> to start this game, especially with those reverses and some big plays here on offense. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Second and short. Play action. Brown has time. Lops it into the corner of the end zone. Broken up incomplete. Warfield there along with true freshman Bryce Gibson. And 
intended for Jester Wea, who averaged 24 yards a catch last season. Keep an eye on number seven here, the starting corner for Youngstown State, just a true freshman, freshman as you mentioned, Robert. He's being matched up with one of the top receivers in the entire ACC. Does a good job. Maybe gets a little help here over top from his safety. Solomon Warfield coming over, but they like this young freshman. And remember, they had to replace five starters from Youngstown State in the secondary last year, so he's one of five new faces back there who are getting tested for the first time, and what a test. We are the fifth-year senior. Timeout, Pitt. Didn't like what they saw there, and they'll call a timeout. First charge. Just under 11 minutes left to go here in the first quarter, scoreless in Pittsburgh. I know when I hand them the keys to their first car, it's gonna be scary, but I also know that we're gonna have USAA insurance for both my boys. And it's something that they're not even gonna to have to think of. It's just gonna be in the family. Wanna hear something crazy? We somehow figured out how to make this easy but we still haven't figured out how to make a video call simple enough for your grandpa to use. How'd you do that? I don't know. Wouldn't it be great if we all got with 2017 already and had a simple video calling app that just worked? Introducing Duo. It's simple, high quality video calling by Google. Whatever phone, whatever network, you'll get a video call that just works. Google Duo, video calling by Google. Scoreless early here between Youngstown State of the FCS and Pitt. Third down and a yard, a long yard coming up here for the Panthers. Pitt excelled in the red zone last year. Very high scoring team a season ago, averaged 41 points a game. Tenth in the country. Also gave up 35 points a game. Handoff. Diving forward for a first down to the 16-yard line is Darren Hall. A lot of shifting before the play for Pitt. A new offensive coordinator, Sean Watson, replaces Matt Canada, who moved on to go uh, take the job at LSU. And so I think everyone's kind of curious to see what this offense is going to look like. So explosive a season ago. School record 532 points in 13 games. Hall again. Breaks it through the line of scrimmage. Driving his way forward inside the 10. Close to a first down of the six-yard line. This is what Pitt does. Power football. Darren Hall is going to get a good block from Alex Officer. He's going to pull around. And then it's just power. Physicality as he brings a couple tacklers with him put them inside the 10 yard line. He's excited, look at him. That's opening day football right there from Darren Hall. He is a Youngstown native from Austin Town Fitch High School, a junior. And it is a first down, will set up a first and goal for Pitt. Only three pass attempts for Brown so far. He had that one swing pass that turned in to a 30 yard reception. One out of three so far. We have the big receiver split wide to the left. Henderson, a little smaller in stature, goes in motion. Olison cuts left, powers his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Pitt gets on the board, 6 0. This play was set up by Quadri Henderson, who they're going to bring around and fake the reverse to him. He draws a lot of attention, and then Olison just powers his way into the end zone. Six yard run for Olison, who scored just two touchdowns last year behind James Conner. New kicker Alex Kessman puts it up and puts it through. Pitt takes the opening kickoff, marches down the field. Quadri Olison, six yard touchdown run, puts the Panthers on top, seven to nothing. Financial planning works a lot like GPS. It's a roadmap for your money, helping you balance the life you want now and later. It can help you reach your goals, like the retirement of your dreams or a family vacation. Working with a Northwestern Mutual Financial Advisor means that you get a financial plan tailored to your life, helping you prioritize and reach your goals one by one. Life has many twists and turns. 
Planning with Northwestern Mutual can help you stay on track and make the most of your money today and tomorrow. Quadri Olesen puts Pitt on the board for the first time this season, 7-0. The Panthers lead Youngstown State. Yeah, that's some uh, the opening day jitters right there is, uh, yep, we don't want to show that. <laughs> I've been there many times, many times in the first football game of the season when you, you get a little juiced up, and then you have to kind of let the demons out. <laughs> Kessman's kick will be taken by freshman Christian Turner. Good coverage by the Panthers will stop Turner short of the 20 yard line. So Youngstown State sees Pitt go 11 plays, 71 yards, just over five minutes to take the lead. Now quarterback Hunter Wells, a senior from Navarre, Ohio, will lead his team onto the field. Amazing story, Hunter Wells. He started against Pitt back in 2015, and then he was benched. It started last season. It was up and down, rocky for him. Didn't even know if he was going to be a part of the program. Decided to stick with it. They had a bunch of injuries at the quarterback position. He makes the most of it, sticks around, ends up starting the last nine games of the season last year. They go all the way to the FCS National Championship, have an amazing run, beat Eastern Washington on the road, and, and here we are. He'll throw on the first play of the game. It's caught out in the flat. Catch made by Alvin Bailey. Well, you lose two starting tailbacks from a season ago. Jody Webb, Mark Ruiz from Youngstown State. And so in comes Tevin McCaster. He's going to be one of our impact players on the offensive side for, for the Penguins. And then on defense, Dennis Briggs. Got to have somebody keeping the defense together. Dennis Briggs is a team captain, a vocal leader back there, and knows all the checks. He gets everybody lined up. Despite that up and down year, Wells is a veteran. This is his 28th career start. And he'll hand it off for McCaster. Pulling his way forward for a first down on the 32. Youngstown is not a team that's going to be particularly fancy in how they run their offense. No, they're not. And that is a Bo Pelini identity thing. That, that goes back to his days as a blue-collar coach growing up in Youngstown, Ohio. And now he's back at, at Youngstown State. They're going to keep it simple. They're going to run the football. They're going to run power. They'll run some play action. But don't be surprised if they take some shots here today because Pitt's going to run a lot of man coverage on the outside. Wells has worked mostly out of the shotgun so far. Fresh set of downs for the Penguins. Fakes the handoff. Throws it up for grabs. Far side. Broken up. Incomplete. Dane Jackson. Broke it up. It was intended for Isaiah Scott. Outside, he's got man-to-man -man coverage. We talked about it. And then here's Dane Jackson, a redshirt sophomore, getting a chance to start for the first time. The big question, how are these corners for Pitt going to hold up throughout this football game? Right there, first challenge down the field. Excellent coverage. Wells sets. Throws near side, wide open. Christian Turner in the flat across midfield. Turner in a foot race, cuts inside to the 30. Turner dragged down from behind, flag down. Turner all the way inside the 25-yard line. Flag down late in the play at the 26. Wide open. Our referee today is Jeff Flanagan. Michael Walk in the back, green run with an 83 offense, 10 yard penalty. The ball still remains beyond the line of game. First down. Kevin Rader. They're going to get Rader for blocking the back down the field, but this is a tremendous explosive play for this Youngstown State offense. And you get a chance to look at Christian Turner, number 20. If you're just watching Youngstown State football and you, you don't know who Christian Turner is, he's a freshman. He wears the same number as Jody Webb, who, was the, who looks very similar to him last year for Youngstown State. Great play, bust out of the backfield, wide open. And then, of course, uh, well, what do you think about that call? <laughs> let that one go? Touch foul, we'll call it. Okay, well, nonetheless, they get a big play, big first down inside pit territory. It ends up going for 41 yards. They back it up to the 37. Turner, a true freshman from Cincinnati. LaSalle High School led them to back-to-back -back state titles. Under center. 
Straight ahead, handoff from McCaster, and he's stopped. Sean Idowu from his linebacker position. Now, Idowu is just going to come in here unblocked. Look at this, right in here in the backfield, knife's in. Gets McCaster on the ground, great job. Number 23. The passing, and we saw Turner wide open on that reception. A huge problem last year for Pitt, the pass defense. We'll yeah, talk about yeah, that well, more. We can talk a bunch about that <laughs> defense because it was not very good. Youngstown State, two out of three so far for 55 yards passing the ball. Play action. Wells has time. Throws. Has a man. Incomplete intended for Damon Patterson. Defender fell down. And Bryson Garner, who's getting the start today, it's the, the opposite safety position from Dennis Briggs, we mentioned. He's starting in place of Jordan Whitehead, this also ACC uh, starting free safety. He's suspended for this game, so they're going to give Bryson Garner the first start. He's a redshirt freshman, and they want to see how he holds up. Third and long here. Third down and nine. Four receivers, two splits each side. Wells will work out of the shotgun. Play clock down to five. Gets the playoff. Steps up in the pocket. Incomplete. And it'll be fourth down. Looks like YSU will punt. Well, that's where this defense can be suffocating. Third and long. They're not going to back off the wide receivers. They don't care how many you put out there. They're going to play that man coverage across the board. And if they get some pressure home, they're going to force an errant throw like that on Hunter Wells on third down. And instead, they're going to have to, to punt this thing away. So what was a promising drive, you have a penalty, backs you up to the 40-yard line, and then you sort of don't go anywhere, and now you end up putting football back. All Missouri Valley Football Conference punter Mark Schuler drops it inside the 15 to the 11. Beautiful day here in Pittsburgh now with the Panthers leading it 7 to nothing over Youngstown State. The Autumn Carved Turkey is back for a limited time at Subway. So much turkey. College mascots are confident, but when it comes to mortgages, they're less confident. Fortunately, there's Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, proud supporter of college athletics. 7-0 Pitt with the lead over Youngstown State. Both these teams and coaches are well-traveled, but they both got their start in the same place, Youngstown, Ohio. Pat Narduzzi played at Ursuline. Bo Pelini played at Cardinal Mooney. They played each other, I believe, three times in high school. I, I chatted with Coach Narduzzi yesterday. He couldn't remember how many games he won or lost. He just knew he won 35-0 the last time they played. Brown rolls out, throws into the flat, caught by the tight end Flanagan. It's funny, in talking to Coach Narduzzi, he said, all these kids now know each other. They're all on Instagram. They all follow each other on Twitter. He said, there were no seven-on-seven -seven games with Ursuline guys and Mooney guys back in the day. He said, you stayed in your territory. They didn't come to our parties, and we didn't go to their parties. No doubt. I like that rivalry. That's how it should be. That's what football is all about. High school, college, it doesn't matter. Now everyone's buddy-buddy. <laughs> Social media, man. Bringing everyone together. <laughs> Brown under center. Reverse handoff for Henderson. Pass blocking. Henderson shakes into the open field. Breaking tackles. Quadri Henderson. Terrific run out to the 30-yard line for a first down. What do you see this movie? Puts on number 14, Solomon Warfield. Gets a good block. Cuts up field. And then whoop. A little jitterbug there. Cuts it back inside for a big game. His offensive coordinator, Watson, Sean Watson, <laughs> referred to him as a fun piece to play with. I'd say so. That's like a toy on Christmas morning. You've got to be excited about having a weapon like that on your offense. 5'8", 190 pounds, Wilmington, Delaware, throw into the flat, caught, turning upfield for a short gain and wrestled out of bounds. Is Rafael Arujo Lopes, his first catch of the game. Wow. 
you know, last year, this pit offense was near the entire tops in the country, 10th in the FBS, 40.9 points per game. That's the highest points per game in the history of the Pitt Panthers. This, this goes way back. So, a little pressure here on Sean Watson, the new offensive coordinator. Big shoes to fill with Matt Canada taking off to, to LSU. Play action again. Brown has time, throws, and caught from a kneeling position. Aaron Matthews to the 41-yard line and a first down. With this chemistry on the outside. Aaron Matthews just cuts this route off short. Max Brown sees it, delivers the football. We talked about James Conner, graduated from last year's team, really second in every rushing category behind Tony Dorsett at the school. Nathan Peterman also terrific quarterback last season now with the Bills. Flags are down. It may have been an illegal motion before the play. Second 37. Quadri Allison. Illegal shift. Two men moving did not reset. Number 87 and number two. Five yard penalty. First down. Brown looking to be the latest in a series of transfer quarterbacks that have played well at Pitt. Tom Savage, and now the starter for the Texans, came from Rutgers, and Peterman himself came from Tennessee. Yeah, it seems to be a theme. You know, as a coach, you lose a guy like Peterman, and you don't really have an answer on the roster. You're more than willing to answer the phone or make that call to a Max Brown, who was the former national quarterback, not, not, not quarterback, excuse me, national offensive player of the year uh, in the entire country, of course, USA Today. Gatorade Player of the Year, all the accolades coming out of high school. Panthers back up five yards. It's a handoff. Big hole right side. Another good tackle there in the open field on Darren Hall. Brown, as you said, so decorated coming out of high school in 2012. Gatorade National Player of the Year out of Washington State. Huge numbers and an interesting journey for him at USC. Yeah, I mean, he had a couple opportunities to win that job. Obviously, he redshirted. He had a chance to battle for it in 14, back up in 15. And then Coach Clay Helton said, hey, we've got this kid, Sam Darnold, and, and, and obviously Max Brown. You two are going to go compete for this job. I'm not going to worry about where you were recruited and any of that. He's going to play the best player. And Max Brown beat out Sam Darnold for that job. <laughs> was going to captain that season before the year. So obviously his players had tremendous respect for him. They thought he was going to be the guy. You know, USC, one of the top teams in the entire country last year, just didn't sort of go their way as they started the season. Max Brown goes to the bench. In comes Sam Darnold. And again, the rest is history. You know what USC did? They go to the Rose Bowl. They uh, defeat Penn State. Had a terrific, terrific, terrific year. It is a first down just across midfield. Henderson again on the sweep. And dragged out of bounds, just shy of the 40 yard line. Coach Narduzzi gave credit to his tight end coach, Tim Salem. Said he made the first contact with Brown when they got wind that he was interested in transferring. When Brown visited, Pitt didn't even have a quarterback coach or an offensive <laughs> coordinator in place. He still loved it. He made the decision. It all started with one phone call from the tight ends coach. It's amazing. I know Tim Salem. He goes way back. He was at Ohio State before I got there way back in the day with John Cooper. Had a chance to spend some time with, with Coach Salem yesterday. Terrific, terrific coach. Hall up the middle to the 39. It's been kind of a split situation so far in the backfield between Allison and Hall. Quadri Olison was the 2015 ACC Offensive Rookie of the Year. Ran for 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns that year. After James Conner, who was the starter, went down in the opening game against Youngstown State. Just short of a first down. Pitt continues to put itself in third and short situations. Smart football. Situational football. Got to stay ahead of the sticks. They've done a good job of that so far in this ball game. Ninth play of the drive coming up. Started all the way back at the 12-yard line. 
A pit three for three on third down. We'll see if they make it four for four. Imagine a heavy dose of number 37, Quantry Allison here on third and inches. He'll get the ball, he'll get the first down, and a little bit more to the 35 yard line. Allison, a big back, really wears you down. There's no doubt, this was the play of the day so far as he hurdles the defender on the opening drive and takes it down inside Youngstown State territory. And then he finishes the drive off with a nice run here. And then inside the red zone. You want to get in the end zone, of course, so finds his way in. Quadri Ellison having a nice little afternoon, get a chance to, to start as James Conner has moved on to the National Football League. Play action again. Brown all sorts of time, lobs it down the middle for Flynn again. He's got it inside the 10. The tight end transfer from Rutgers puts it inside the 10-yard line of the five. You ever hear the expression, drop it in the bucket? It's exactly what Max Brown does here. Right down the seam, he's going to be matched up with Billy Nico Hurst. And that's just a beautiful throw. Terrific concentration to haul this football in. Nico Hurst is beat. Football's right there. Flanagan had just 18 catches in his career at Rutgers. 33 games, big one there to move it down to the five-yard line. First and goal. Olison breaks a tackle, bouncing it to the outside for a Pittsburgh touchdown. Second of the game, Quadri Olison, 13 to nothing. This is a terrific run. He breaks the first tackle in the backfield. He breaks outside, then he hits a little R1, or L1 rather, on the Xbox and the PlayStation. Some of the kids will get mad at me if I use the wrong system, but he pops out to the outside and makes Hedgedus miss, and he's in the end zone for a second touchdown of the afternoon. Kessman's kick is up, and it is good. Long drive, 11 plays, 88 yards, 5.07, the time of possession, 14 nothing pit. Take another look at the run. Again, just power up the middle. Season ed edge and cer certainly bounces outside, and Kyle Hedges is getting some action at strong safety. Can't make the tackle. Already matched his touchdown total from last year with two. Thousands affected by Hurricane Harvey urgently need support. Help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter to these families. Donate today by giving to redcross.org slash ESPN. Fourteen nothing pit with the early lead. This is the fifth all time meeting in this series. Pitt leads three to one. YSU actually beat Pitt in the season opener back in 2012 by two touchdowns. And each of these coaches' first games was against each other back in 2015. Pittsburgh won a high scoring game 45 37. Kick will be taken by Turner, two yards deep in the end zone. He comes out, he pauses. And he stopped at the 16 yard line. Poor field position for YSU, down two touchdowns. Youngstown State University located about a little bit over an hour northwest of here on I-76, the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Founded in 1908, part of the, probably the premier FCS football conference, the Missouri Valley Football Conference, home to North Dakota State, such a powerhouse. Yeah. South Dakota State, a good team as well. well. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, they consider themselves like the SEC of FCS. That's exactly what they call themselves. And of course, uh, Youngstown State going all the way to the FCS National Championship last year. McCaster nowhere to go. Tackle to the 15 yard line for a loss of a yard. There's some of that resume for the MVFC. Everyone knows Carson Wentz, the starting quarterback from the Philadelphia Eagles. He spent some time at North Dakota State. Taking them to some national championships to see the runners up. Youngstown State last year, Illinois State all the way back in 2014. They've got a terrific conference. Four teams inside the top 10 in the polls preseason. YSU picked third in its own conference, but ranked eighth in the preseason coaches poll. 
Wells on second and long, stands in, throws over the middle, caught by the tight end, Raider. Might have fumbled the ball. Did it come out of the 25-yard line? They're going to say he was down. Raider had his sports center moment last year in the national yeah. semifinal against Eastern Washington. A thrilling YSU victory. If you remember that drive, the end of that Eastern Washington game, they get the football with about a minute and a half to go. They go all the way down the field. Raider makes this catch behind the back of the defender from Eastern Washington. Good catch right there on first down. We'll see if it, I think his knee may have been down. They're going to review it. They're going to have a little bit of a booth review. Make sure that there wasn't a turnover. And, and I'll tell you what, if you're Youngstown State, this is dangerous mm. territory here. You're hoping that the booth does not overturn this and turn the football over to Pittsburgh because you started out with a nice drive, had to go punt the football away, and then you know, Pittsburgh, of course, goes their two drives to score. But you take another look at it. Is that football coming out? That is a tough angle to see because you want to look at his right knee. Take a look at that right knee. Is that right knee down? Oh, boy. That's about as close as it can be. I'll let you make that call. I don't want to make that call. <laughs> I feel bad for our ACC crew as they have to go to the booth and take a look at that one because that is about as close as it's going to get. It is a bang, bang. As close as it is, typically they stay with the call in the field. But as you said, <laughs> if this is overturned and ruled a fumble, oh, Pitt's got the ball up two touchdowns going in from the 25. Oh, this is uh, this is dangerous territory here. Yeah, obviously you have to have conclusive video evidence to overturn it. It's real tough to see. That's why I, I'm leaning more towards keeping the call on the field. The ball's out there. Is his knee down? It's hard to tell. He's got a towel on, so the towel is white, just like his knee pads as he goes down to the ground. He was Elijah Zeiss, the outside linebacker who pulled it out. Oh my goodness, that is so close. Zeiss, like so many of these players. After a review, running on the field, was a catch and the runner was down. Stands, third down. Stands, not confirmed, right? There's some terminology you want to look, listen for right there. He would have said confirmed if they saw it. They didn't see enough to overturn it, so they stay with the call on the field. Zeiss, a Pittsburgh native, North Allegheny High School. It is still third down and a yard. Wells out of the shotgun with McCaster to his left. Pitch showing blitz. McCaster inside handoff. And he is very close to the first down of the 26. It's the final 10 seconds of the first quarter. on the spot. They'll have to measure with two seconds left. Either way, this will be the last play of the first quarter. Seven nothing. Check that 14 nothing. Pitt with the lead over Youngstown State on a pair of Quadri Olison touchdown runs here from Heinz Field in the Steel City. Not every rivalry is a fair fight. Like Wendy's and the beef they've always had with the other guys who make you settle for thawed out. But Wendy's goes all out. They've been serving up fresh, never frozen beef on every hot and juicy hamburger for nearly 50 years. Which is why true hamburger fans don't see much of a rivalry between fresh and frozen. And why Wendy's holds the title official hamburger of the NCAA. It's been 60 years since I came up here to watch football. I've seen a hurricane that rocks and a tide that rolls. I've seen hustle, perseverance, and heart. I've seen a bowl of cotton that's anything but soft. Some call it hard work, determination, or grit. I call it blimp-worthy.
You are watching the ACC on ESPN. Pitt leads Youngstown State 14 to nothing as we get set to start the second quarter. Bo Pelini, best known for his seven years at Nebraska, won at least nine games every year. For some folks that miss Bo Pelini at Nebraska, great resume. Seven seasons there, comes back home to Youngstown State. Gets to reconnect with Jim Tressel, who's the president at Youngstown State, of course, and a nice little thing building here. They want to get back to where they were in the mid to late 90s, winning multiple national championships and going to the playoffs every season. They have high expectations for this Penguin group. Bo Pelini is rolling the dice here. It was short of a first down by about half a foot. They're going to go for it on fourth and inches from their own 26-yard line. High formation. Fullback running over the left side. I don't think he got it. Depend on the spot. Looks like the far linesman is moving him out to the 27-yard line, which would be enough. It was actually the backup tight end, Shane Kuhn, on the carry. It is a first down. This is a dangerous call. Fourth and one, fourth and inches in your own territory, in your own 20-yard line. I know you feel good about your offensive line, but that is a risky, risky call. Looks like the gamble's going to pay off. Aitowu met him at the line of scrimmage, but Kuhn at 250 pounds powered forward for a fresh set of downs. Robert Lee, Dustin Fox with you on this Saturday afternoon, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Fake the end around, throw down the middle, wide open. Kevin Rader into the open field across the 40 and brought down for a huge gain in a YSU first down. Well, that's one of the things that Youngstown State's going to try and do. They're going to try and get safeties matched up in man coverage where they feel like they've got a mismatch. And right there, you take a look down the middle of the field, that's Dennis Briggs we highlighted early in the ball game. He's staring in the backfield. Tevin McCaster runs a wheel route. His eyes are on him, and all of a sudden he realizes he's got to get back to the middle of the field and take his, uh, his man, Kevin Rader. 36-yard gain to Rader. Wells, quick throw, incomplete, broken up by Dean Jackson, intended for Stefan Derrick. Second time we've seen Jackson break up a pass. You talked about the pit pass defense earlier. Gave up 333 yards passing per game last year, which was the second worst in the entire country. 127th in the country. Uh, about as bad as it gets. Now listen, some of that is on you know, your offense scores a bunch of points. It's tough defensively, but we had a chance to talk with some of the coaches yesterday, and, and they feel like this is a new group. We went back to basics to fix some of the problems that they had last season. Out of the backfield, Christian Turner, big catch earlier, and has another YSU first down inside the 25. Again, they're finding safeties in man coverage situations. When you put your corners on an island, and a lot of times you want to stop the run, you bring your safeties down inside the box. They're matched up on running backs and tight ends. And again, that's Dennis Briggs, number 20, 20 on 20 crime right there as the freshman out in the back catches the football. And Briggs a little bit late to the party. Another first down for the Penguins. Wells. Looks like he may be changing the play at the line with eight on the play clock. Now backs up to the shotgun. Inside handoff. And diving forward inside the 20. The number one thing that the Pittsburgh defense wants to do is they want to stop the run. They pride themselves on it. They were very, very good against the run a season ago. 16th in the entire country against the run. The problem is you, know, you, you dedicate yourselves to putting that many guys inside the box on the outside. Your corners have to hold up those safeties. They got to be able to cover some running backs and tight ends down the field. And if they can't do it, we're susceptible to, to some big plays. And we saw that a bunch of this pit defense a season ago. Turner in there in the backfield along with the quarterback Wells, the senior. Fakes the handoff, throws into the corner. Incomplete. Youngstown State's getting every look they want. I mean, they're getting every single look they want. They're getting their speed guys on safeties. Again, this is Alvin Bailey, a transfer from the University of Florida. A lot of speed on the outside. He hit him matched up against the safety. He'll take that all day. Bailey led the team in catches 47 last year, also had five touchdowns. Played particularly well in the title game against JMU. 
That's seven catches for 68 yards. Empty backfield. Third down. Wells. Quick throw into the flat for Bailey. Cuts up field to the 15. Flag down. He's short of the first down of the 14 yard line. Got to get a hold on Stephon Derrick here on the outside. Is they're trying to get a quick bubble screen. Holding. Offense number 13. 10 yard penalty. Third down. He was short of the first down, but if Bo Pelini went for it at his own 25 yard line, you're thinking he may <laughs> go for it again in plus territory. They've got a good field goal kicker, but you're in a 14 0 ball game and you haven't really shown any signs of stopping this pit offense. You're going to be very, very likely to, to risk it and gamble it. So now it's third and long back at the 26 yard line, third and 13. Take a look at this matchup up top. You got Dane Jackson, man coverage. Going to bring him in motion. Bailey in motion. Well, steps up in the pocket, throws incomplete, had a wide open man, Tevin McCaster. That's on Hunter Wells. He's got to take a little bit off that football. He had McCaster wide open. I don't know if he'd have scored a touchdown, but he'd have gotten near a first down. Again, good job by Hunter Wells. He looks off the safeties, and then McCaster's wide open at about the 15 yard line. Probably would have had a first down. Instead, fourth and 13, and here we go. We're going to have to kick a field goal. Not going to risk it on fourth and 13, Robert. <laughs> Left footed kicker Zach Kennedy, a Cardinal Mooney graduate from Youngstown, Ohio. First team all league two years ago and was 16 of 19 from under 39 yards last year. This will be a 43 yard attempt and it is no good. Youngstown State comes up empty after a long drive to the dismay of head coach Bo Pelini. Award-winning interface. Award-winning design. Award-winning engine. The Volvo XC90. The most awarded luxury SUV of the century. Second quarter. Head coach Bo Pelini of Youngstown State hoping his team can get its first defensive stop of the game. Pitt averaging over seven yards a play on two scoring drives. Henderson. Good defense this time and tripped up. Going to that play a lot. Well, they love it because if you're going to run the football with Henderson, Eventually, it's going to open other things up in the offense. You saw the first touchdown run. Everybody's staring at number 10. Picking up the tempo here a bit. They'll go the other direction with Henderson. Trying to get to the edge. Turns the corner 35. And Henderson ducks out of bounds. Short of the 40 yard line of hit first down. Henderson better be in good shape because they're going to run him. <laughs> He's going to run all the way across. To the other opposite side of the field for about a what, about 12 yard gain. He probably ran 50 yards to pick up 12 yards in the previous play. He had to run another 30 yards. So he's getting his workout in today. Good cardio for Henderson. He checks <laughs> out of the game to catch a quick breather. Haven't asked Brown to do a whole lot so far. He'll roll out right, throw a short pass for Hall. Stumbles forward to the 46 yard line. And in talking to offensive coordinator Sean Watson said they want to be efficient. They want Brown to be a 70 percent passer. There's some lofty goals for a quarterback. You get in the neighborhood of 60 mm. to 65 percent. You're feeling pretty good about your quarterback. Six out of eight so far today for 83 yards.
Running it over the right side, close to a first down at the 49, is Darren Hall. It's been mostly Hall between the 10 yard lines or so, and then Olison to finish off these drives. Well, He's got both touchdowns. You know, they've got some talented guys in the backfield there. I think they're trying to figure out how the rotation is going to go as they go throughout their season. A lot of people expect Quadri Olison to kind of be the bell cow back there. That's what it's been like for Pittsburgh. You go all the way back to the days with LaShawn McCoy to Dion Lewis, James Connor, and, and now it could be Quadri Olison, the next 1,500 yard rusher. He'll get the handoff here and he'll be stopped for a loss in the backfield. Jalen Powell, transfer from Michigan State, actually played for Pat Narduzzi with the Spartans. He did. You know, he came on the scene last year towards the end, end of the season. There were some injuries in the secondary. He did start the final two games of the year. The one thing with him is to talk to some of the coaches. To start in this defense, you have to be very, very disciplined with your eye control. And that's one of the areas they want to see him work on. He's a young kid who uh, has played a lot of football, but they just feel like he can progress and grow in this defense. Pitt's going to go for it on fourth down near midfield. Will they just try to draw them off sides? They'll call a timeout. Second time out of the half for Pitt. Fourteen nothing Pitt with the lead facing a fourth down just shy of midfield when we return. Remember that accident I got in with the pole and I had to make a claim and all that? Is that whole thing still dragging on? No, I took some pics with the app and filed a claim. But you know how they send you money to cover repairs and... It took forever to pay you, right? No, I got paid right away. But at the very end of it all, my agent... Wouldn't even call you back, right? No, she called to see if I was happy. But if I wasn't happy with my claim experience for any reason, they'd give me my money back. No questions asked. Can you believe that? No. The claim satisfaction guarantee. Only from Allstate. Switching to Allstate is worth it. DirecTV has been rated number one in customer satisfaction over cable for 17 years running. But some people still like cable, just like some people like banging their head on a low ceiling. Drinking spoiled milk. Camping in poison ivy. Getting a paper cut. And having their arm trapped in a vending machine. But for everyone else, there's DirecTV. For number one rated customer satisfaction over cable, switch to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Pitt with the two touchdown lead here nearing the midway point of the second quarter. The yards not all that lopsided. Pitt 181, YSU 123. But some ill-timed penalties have short-circuited Youngstown drives. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. Youngstown State's been able to move the football. They have 123 yards. They've been going down the field. Five first downs. That penalty killed them. And, and of course, you have a penalty on the other drive that puts you back and then you miss the field goal. So could be, a, could be a 14 7 14 14 type of ball game Pitt's going for it on fourth down from midfield and they will get it to the 49 yard line of YSU Barely. <laughs> Pat Narduzzi aggressive <laughs> well out near midfield a little bit different a little bit more comfortable to go for it and be sort of risky out near midfield but not quite as risky as Bo Pelini, who wanted to, to go for it at fourth and one in his own 20 in the first quarter. But I'll, kudos to, to Coach Narduzzi for keeping it in line with the aggressive nature that uh, Bo Pelini brought. Both conversion attempts equally successful. To midfield, first and 10. Henderson in motion. Hey, later. Henderson takes the handoff running right. Henderson steps through a tackle. Henderson to the 40, cuts middle of the field, and inside the 35 for a first down, a gain of 17. You know, it's funny, this offseason, Quadri Henderson was talking to some of the reporters locally, and, and he said he wanted to develop his game into to more of just a, more of a wide receiver, not just a runner. Boy, he may need to carry the football more. I mean, I, I know he doesn't want to be that one-trick pony that is a guy who's, you know, a gadget type player, but he's so valuable to this offense. And you can see early in this ball game, a Quadri Henderson now, that's his seventh carry for 63 yards. Brown feeling the pressure, lobs it down the middle, double coverage. Broken up. Broken up by Jalen Powell. Intended for Chester Wea. It's a really good play from Jalen Powell. I, I sort of question the decision from Max Brown. I know what he's trying to get here, but he's got double coverage. 
two safeties bracketing uh, over top there, and you know, Jester Wea is just not going to be able to go get that football. Kyle Hedgedis was step for step with Wea, number 10. Took a shot downfield there. Allison in the backfield on second and 10. He'll get the handoff running left. And dragged down from behind at the 25 yard line. I think he's banged up. Slow to not, get up. This is not good for Pittsburgh. Quadri Olison listed as the starter at running back for Pitt is down after being tackled from behind. They'll tend to Olison and we'll step aside with Pitt up 14 to nothing. You and I had a fight recently. Did I win? No, I won easily. Doesn't sound right. Hello, the goddess of death has invaded Asgard. I'm going to stop her. Hello? No, I'm putting together a team. He's a fighter. Has my steam got a name? Re Revengers. Revengers? We don't have to have a name. We could have no name. Thor Ragnarok. Get tickets now. I know when I hand them the keys to their first car, it's going to be scary. But I also know that we're going to have USAA insurance for both my boys. And it's something that they're not even going to have to think of. It's just going to be in the family. Quadri Olison, who has both touchdowns today for Pittsburgh, did walk off the field, but he also went back to the locker room. You take a look as he goes down here. Just a little bit awkward. It's not too easy to see as he comes down that that left knee just kind of. It's caught up there. That's what they were looking at as they got him off the field. He did walk off the field, of course, and for his own power. But that that's a big loss if you're Coach Narduzzi and offensive coordinator Sean Watson. Eight carries for 33 yards, two touchdowns, also a 30-yard catch so far in the game. Flanagan in motion, third and short. Brown into the flat. Flanagan wide open, turns up field 20. Flanagan lowers his shoulder and out of bounds for a first down of the 16-yard line. That's what all those runs to Olison and Darren Hall are going to get you a little play action pass. The big boy out in the flat. Check that Tyler Sear freshman on the catch number 86. Does move Pitt into the red zone from the 15 yard line. Henderson in motion. Stop harassing the hell. Run up the middle. Darren Hall Stop stood up and stopped at the 11-yard line. So you got to think Hall's going to get a majority of the work here going forward. Yeah, and we haven't seen the young freshman, A.J. Davis. We, we were expecting to see number 21 in there at some point today, the true freshman, Under Armour All-American, who's made a nice impression. But so far, Darren Hall, Quadri Olison, and you know, Shantez Moss is, is in the mix as well. And eight carries for Allison, eight for Hall, and seven for Henderson. They've had all the carries so far for Pitt. From just outside the 10. It's another run to Hall. Spun down at the eight yard line. Interesting they talked to you mentioned earlier they talked to coach Narduzzi how much do you show in this game with Penn State coming up next week in Oklahoma State do you keep it vanilla they haven't gone too crazy so far I think in the back of your mind as a coach you always don't want to show too much when you know what you have two top 10 teams in the entire country on deck but they also understand what Youngstown State is and, and they can't take this team for granted this is a big time game big time program in Youngstown State that as we mentioned is you know, played for a national championship last year. They beat them five years ago in 2012. Last year was an eight-point game, or two years ago was an eight-point game. So they respect the Penguins. They don't want to show too much. But so far, they're doing just enough. We'll see nothing.
Redskins, Chiefs, tomorrow, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. 14-0 get leads as the sounds of Sweet Caroline cascading over Heinz Field here in the Steel City with the Panthers up by two touchdowns. A couple of 11-play scoring drives to start the game for Pitt. This is the 13th play of this drive coming up. Started all the way back on the 26-yard line. Third down inside the 10. Hall, check that, Davis. First time we've called his name out. He's tackled short of the first down. <laughs> Here's A.J. Davis, the young freshman who's made a Quite an impression on Coach Narduzzi and Sean Watson early in camp. We expected to see him. That's the first carry he's going to have this afternoon. Terrific, terrific player. He had 25 offers coming out of high school, and he chose Coach Narduzzi and his staff to come spend his four seasons, at least, hopefully, four seasons with Coach Narduzzi. You never know with a talent like, like A.J. Davis. They'll go for it on fourth and a yard. Davis, first down inside the five. Smash mouth football, Pittsburgh football to the three yard line. It's a guy that did it all in high school. Had 5,400 yards in his career. Under Armour All American, all the accolades. And you wonder sometimes, you know, how do you get a kid like that? It's Coach Narduzzi. He is a terrific recruiter, he's very personable. Uh, he walked into his home and A.J. Davis obviously felt right at home here in the Steel City. First and goal. Henderson reversing direction. It's a handoff for Hall. Stopped at the two-yard line from behind. Johnson, Louis Jean from his defensive end position may have saved the touchdown. All right, so A.J. Davis is coming back in here. Coach Narduzzi and Sean Watson want to get him his first touchdown. Let me know when you go to Buffalo. Second and one at the goal line. I'm, I'm, I'm giving the football to 21, letting him get a little taste. He's the deep back. In motion, Hall. Handoff, Davis diving over the right side. Powering his way in for a pit touchdown. A.J. Davis makes it 20 to nothing. Look, again they fake that reverse and A.J. Davis just comes around. Shows a little bit of power there. Forcing his way into the end zone. Act like you've been there, toss it to the, he's been there by the way, many, many times, just not in college. A lot of touchdowns in high school, and certainly I think Pitt fans are going to expect a lot of number 21 finding the end zone for years to come. Kessman on for the extra point, and it's good. 21 0, a 16 play, 74 yard demoralizing pit drive that takes almost nine minutes. Again, we talk about how many times they're going to fake that, that jet sweep around the back, and you know, if you're a linebacker, safety, you're staring in the backfield, and all of a sudden it just makes you move just enough. And then they hand the football off to A.J. Davis up the middle. Didn't have to do too much work. It's okay. Third rushing touchdown of the game for the Panthers. First career touchdown for Davis out of Lakeland, Florida. Described to us as good in space, a bit of a scat type of player. He doesn't look like a scat back. No, not at all. I mean, that's what I'm saying. He, he showed some physicality there at the end of that run to get in. You see his teammates coming up to him and giving some love to him. Hey, man, you, you, you're going to expect to do a lot more of that here in your career. Getting involved. Look at all those guys. Mm. Obviously, Quadri Henderson's a wide receiver, has seven carries today, but Darren Hall, Allison, A.J. Davis now, everybody getting involved for this pit offense, the running game. That's the one thing that Coach Narduzzi stressed to me yesterday. No matter what, as many points as they put on the board, as prolific as the offense was a season ago, they still want to run the football. Deep kick will be taken. Nope, it goes out of the end zone for a touchback. So three touchdown drives for Pitt. They have not punted today. They've scored every time they've had the ball. They've totaled 38 plays for 233 yards. And five for seven on, on third down. You're two for two on fourth down. I mean, this is a perfect game offensively mm -hmm. for 
for the Pitt Panthers, and you think about it, we, we've been talking all day, hey, how much do, is Pitt going to show? They haven't had to show that much. Mm -hmm. They've been physical. They've ran the football downhill. Yeah, we've seen some of those jet sweeps with uh, Quadri Henderson, but everybody knows that Henderson's going to do that. That's what he does. And so to be able to do that and have a 21-point lead here on, on Youngstown State, you have to be feeling pretty good about yourself, and not to mention the fact that you know, Youngstown State shot themselves in the foot a couple of times here. This game is a lot closer than that score. YSU takes over on offense with just over three minutes left to go in the half. Pressure's on. He'll throw it away. Could be grounding coming up here. Nobody within about 20 yards of that pass. No penalty flag. It'll be second down. There might be, partner. They're going to have a discussion on this to see if there was a receiver in there, and they may drop a flag. Nobody there, within there it 20 goes. yards. There it Nobody goes. Within 20 yards of that Good pass. call, partner. Youngstown State has only three penalties in this game, and they've all been very important key penalties. Watch Amir Watts, number 34, right up the middle. No one's going to even block him. So he comes through free. You got Briggs in there. Nobody's blocked. Hunter Wells just trying to, to save his life. So he throws the football away to avoid the sack, but it ends up being a devastating penalty. Loss of down as well, second and 21. Wells protected better this time. Throws into the flat and immediately tackled at the 15-yard line. Good play there by Avante Maddox on the catch by Turner. Well, now the defense is just starting to bear down. You're getting a lot of pressure. There's a hold on the offensive line that doesn't get called. There's nowhere to go. As the defense starts to build that momentum, they start to suffocate. And now you've got them in third and a million, third and 19. This is where the pit defense is going to thrive. Maddox. A team captain. Three interceptions a season ago. And you got number four, Damon Patterson, matched up man to man against the safety right here. He knows that he's looking to Hunter Wells. They got they got to get an extra body in the game. They they only got ten guys. Somebody ran on the field very late. It will still be short of the first down at the 32-yard line. Catch made by Kevin Rader. But well short of the first down, YSU will have to punt. Ramoni Dorsey, number 46, is late in the ball game. I'm not sure if... I'm not sure. See, he's late. That's why I was, I was pointing out the fact that you got a safety on a, a, a wide receiver. 46 comes in late. Man. YSU looks like they're going to go for it. Why wouldn't you? Fourth down and three. You're down three touchdowns. It's late in the first half YSU will get the ball to start the second half Pitt has no timeouts left so they can't stop the clock here so YSU looks like they're gonna let it run down and then call a timeout well how, how big Robert would it be if Youngstown State could somehow convert this fourth down and put some points on the board how good would, would coach Polini feel going into halftime knowing that they've shot themselves in the foot and still only be down two scores and a chance to get within one score to start yeah. the second half. Yeah, they get the football. If they do go for it here, Dustin, I don't think it's beyond saying that if Pitt stops them here, that could really be the end of the game. Pitt will have a three touchdown lead. They would have a minute and a half to try to score again to go up 28 nothing. Could be a death blow. So it's a big call here for Coach Polini. I can understand taking this time out. You want to get the right call drawn up. Pat Narduzzi, as we mentioned, a Youngstown native. His dad was the head coach, Bill Narduzzi. Yeah. He was the head coach at Youngstown from 1975 to 85, and Pat played for him his freshman year. One year, 1985. His last season as a head coach before he decided to move on. Youngstown will now punt. Narduzzi ended up graduating from Rhode Island. Punt his way to Henderson. He'll watch it bounce inside the 20. They'll look for Pitt to be very conservative here when they come out on offense from the 11-yard line with no timeouts and a minute 11 left to go. How about this? This stat, 6.7 yards per play for Youngstown State today. That tells you they're doing something on offense. That is a terrific average, and yet they have zero points. 
Bo Pelini's got to be kicking himself right now, thinking, hey, we're doing everything we can, yet we're still just in crucial situations shooting ourselves in the foot. Those two penalties, mm -hmm. Robert, were just critical. They were driving into the red zone. Mm -hmm. They got a holding call that made it second or third and long. They were ended up missing a field goal. The block in the back on Christian Turner's long yep. reception that got them down near the 20-yard line. It then backs them up to the 30-yard line. Then you take some negative plays. How aggressive will Pitt be here with no timeouts left? Just over a minute 10 left to go in the half. Backed up from their own 11-yard line. It's a handoff. And YSU with two timeouts left. We go under a minute left to go in the first half. Hall on the carry. Pitt's going to let as much time come off the clock here as possible to try to get it to the locker room with a three touchdown lead. Yeah, Coach Narduzzi's thrilled. He's happy. 21 0. Haven't had to do a whole lot. Perfect on all your drives. This could be the last play of the first half. And it's a handoff to the 17 yard line. And unless YSU calls a timeout, which I don't think they will, that will be the last play of this first half of football. All pit in this first half. The only drive they didn't score on was that drive right there when they. Started with a minute left to go in the half. 21 0 at the break. Yeah, great first half for the Pitt Panthers. Youngstown State's got to still be feeling somewhat good about themselves because they know that they can they can move the football. We now welcome in Pitt coach Pat Narduzzi, coach Robert Lee, Dustin Fox with you here. On the surface, it certainly appears that everything's going well for you so far. What were your impressions of that first half? You know, it, uh, besides the three timeouts that we burned, Dustin, I know you don't like that, <laughs> but besides those, you know, that's probably the cleanest you know, first half I've had as a head football coach. Um, I'm, I'm impressed with all the young guys we have on the field, which I told you yesterday, I don't know what we've yeah. got, but, you know, I think our offense scored on three drives. You know, that's the only drive they've had. We've controlled the time possession and. And, uh, you know, I think we've been pretty good except for that wheel route on the back side there. I know you would have covered that. <laughs> Coach, how do you feel about your running game? You get all your backs involved. You get the young freshman, his first touchdown of his career. Got to be feel, feel pretty good about your running game. No doubt about it. Uh, you know, Quadri got a little cramp action there, so we'll, we'll get him some juice at halftime. And, uh, you know, him and Darren Hall are running well. I mean, that one hurdle uh, remind me of old Le'Veon Bell, uh, Michigan State there. That's a big-time run you know, early in the first quarter. Get him some pickle juice, will you? <laughs> no doubt. All right, no Coach. Doubt. Thanks so much. All right, thanks. Pat Narduzzi and the Pitt Panthers lead Youngstown State 21 to nothing here at Heinz Field in the Steel City. Season opener for both these teams, and it's been all Pitt out of the ACC so far. 21 0 over YSU. Tuesday at 8 on ESPN, presented by Hankook Tire. Financial planning works a lot like GPS. It's a roadmap for your money, helping you balance the life you want now and later. It can help you reach your goals, like the retirement of your dreams or a family vacation. Working with a Northwestern Mutual Financial Advisor means that you get a financial plan tailored to your life, helping you prioritize and reach your goals one by one. Life has many twists and turns. Planning with Northwestern Mutual can help you stay on track and make the most of your money today and tomorrow. Welcome back to the Capital One Halftime Report. 
College football season begins with a walk. The walk into the weight room, the first steps to the line of scrimmage, the walk off the bus, where the greatest team simply puts one foot in front of the other until there are no more steps to take. Here's Scoop Jackson. And the Clemson Tigers have won the national championship. Come, let's take a walk. The second the national championship is won, that first step is taken. This is how all college football seasons begin, with this walk. There's a walk every player takes in the spring and summer to live up to the expectations that come in the fall. There's the walk into the weight room, the first steps to the line of scrimmage, the walk before the next drill, Quit walking, let's go! The next snap. The next fade route. Put that foot in the ground. One, two, three. The walk to recovery. The walk of preparation. Challenge yourself. Are you becoming a great player? And are we becoming a championship football team? No. And on that first game day of the season, when the buses pull up, the first steps to greatness, there's that walk into the stadium through a sea of both love and hate of promise and peril, of fans and fate. Give me everything you got, every play. You go get it done! Every single step, yeah. so let's go! Go get it! Yeah. There's that walk through the tunnel, that walk to take the field, the steps into the end zone on each and every touchdown score, the long walks after victory, the longer walks after defeat. Every little step taken leads to something greater, hope. And Saturdays are nothing but anxiety waiting in the balance. Pass is going to be caught. Touchdown! Oh, did he make a move? You kidding me? What a play. For the win! Wow! It's a destination reached only by those who walk the walk. With the greatest team simply putting one foot in front of the other. Until there are no more steps to take. USA Panama, Friday at 7 on ESPN2. Welcome to Between Two Rexes. Let's just say they were going to do a low budget, clearly, life story of Matt Hasback. Because I'm sure that movie's coming out anytime soon. Who would be the actor? Yeah, that's a good question, you? Rex. Mm -hmm. good question. Thank you. Uh, Vin Diesel, maybe? any other ball guy? Probably you Woody think Harrelson, of? maybe? Yeah, hell yeah, that's a good one. Who would play you? It's not about me here, okay, Tim. Sorry. Matt. One of you hassled back. What's the difference? Welcome back to the Capital One Halftime Report. On ABC tonight, Florida State takes on Alabama. Here, FSU coach Jimbo Fisher discusses facing his old boss. What calms you about this team? Well, I think it's very competitive. I think it's very intelligent. Um, I think it understands the big pictures of things you say. And they're not, as I say, they're not seeing the world through a straw. They're, 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 they're grasping everything around them. And speaking of experience, your quarterback is gaining some of that. Uh, mm -hmm. w when have you noticed that he's taken that next step of maturity and growth? Well, I, I think it's been gradual, and, and I, don't, I don't know if there's any one time, but I just think his overall ability to come back after something's went wrong, he knows he can play. What's it going to take to beat Alabama? Doing our job. Press do our job. Line up and play and do your job. Block, tackle, take care of the football, don't have self-inflicted wounds with penalties. Play every play, play with great toughness, effort, discipline, pride. Line up and play. Do your job. That sounds insanely simple. It is. Yeah, yeah, right. That's what, and, at, and at the end of the day, it's what football is. Be a master of the basics. Yeah, we've made a big deal about you and Nick Saban, mm -hmm. you and, and, and Nick, and how far back you all go. But what's one thing about him that you admire the most? You know, I, I think... First of all, the consistency in which he goes to the job. But, you know, Nick, deep down, I, I mean, he's fun to have conversations with. I mean, he's just a very down-to-earth, good guy who cares about people. I'm curious, who are the 2017 Florida State Seminoles? I don't know yet. That'll be seen. We'll have to, that's what we're going to wait and see. And uh, that's, that's, that's what makes this thing so, I think, intriguing and why people want to watch. You want to see what it turns out. I mean, we'll find out who we are. The Capital One Halftime Report continues from Pitt as the Panthers play host to the Penguins from Youngstown State. I 
No tomorrow. No fear. The American League wildcard game, Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. PlayStation View now has NFL Red Zone. So grab your remote. Okay, good try. Start streaming NFL Red Zone today. PlayStation. Back here at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh with the Panthers leading the Youngstown State Penguins 21 to nothing in the 2017 season opener. Robert Lee and Ohio State Buckeye four year starter Dustin Fox back with you from the Steel City. We talked to Coach Pat Narduzzi before halftime and coaches are always looking for something to improve. He was about as content as you can imagine a coach going into the locker room. Certainly he has things he wants to improve, but what really impressed you? Well, he's complaining about the timeouts that he <laughs> yeah. took. So pretty much everything went well for Pitt in the first half. The thing that stands out to me is they wanted to run the football, Robert, and what did they do? They ran the football in this first half and you look at the guys that they were able to get involved. Allison, the, the freshman. Uh, AJ Davis number 21 got involved they got a bunch of dudes back there because they're look they're trying to replace James Conner all that production from a season ago they're trying to get these guys involved in the running game and it worked let's take a look at some of the first half highlights Pitt scored on all three of its drives until the last minute of the half yeah Olsen gets in the end zone on the opening drive of the game powers his way into the end zone and the thing about Olsen he was running the ball so well and so effective he got some cramps had to go in and get a little pickle juice, as Coach said. Here's the second touchdown. Bounces it outside, breaks a couple of tackles, and again, explodes into the end zone. Because he had the cramps, they had to take him inside the locker room. Here's the freshman, the Under Armour All-American, A.J. Davis. Gets his first touchdown of his career, and I'd imagine you may see a couple more of those as we go throughout the season. A.J. Davis certainly hopes so. The stats in that first half hit excellent balance, 146 yards rushing, 93 passing. Youngstown State simply could not run the ball really did pretty well through the air over six yards of play. Yeah, 6.2 yards per play, it's pretty good. And so it tells you they're moving the football. The problem is if you're not getting any points, you know, Pittsburgh's just gonna wear you out. You know, up front, Pittsburgh 146 yards on the ground. They're doing everything that they want offensively, and they're not having to show a whole lot to, to Penn State, who they play next week, and then two weeks, you play Oklahoma State, so they're keeping it as conservative as possible. You know, we were chatting about this with, uh, you know, our producer, we haven't seen a whole lot of Max Brown. The quarterback transfer from USC has got a big arm. They haven't taken many shots down the field. They haven't done a whole lot in the passing game. They are being about as simple as you possibly can. They're getting up in eye formation, power eye, and just running the football right at Youngstown State. Pitt looking to start the season with the win. Youngstown State looking to rally in the second half. We head to the third quarter next with the score Pitt 21 and Youngstown State nothing. We're back with third quarter action right after this. American League wildcard game, Twins, Yankees, Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. Will you be ready when the moment turns romantic? Cialis for daily use treats ED and the urinary symptoms of BPH. Tell your doctor about your medicines and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain or edemphus for pulmonary hypertension, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have a sudden decrease or loss of hearing or vision or an allergic reaction, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about Cialis. You are watching the ACC on ESPN. Ready to start the third quarter from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. 21-0 Pitt leads Youngstown State. Robert Lee and Dustin Fox joining you on this Saturday afternoon in the Steel City early September college football season. Beautiful day. Yeah. High 50s, low 60s. This is football weather. I know it's going to get up into the, the low 80s next week for the opening week of the NFL season here at Heinz Field. But I'll tell you what, this is perfect weather. Pitt and head coach Pat Narduzzi in his third season. They won eight games back-to-back -back seasons in his first two years. First time that's happened since 08-09. What do you see Pitt needing to do as they go try to go up the ladder in what's become arguably the nation's toughest conference, the ACC, certainly top-heavy? Well, look, and they're there. I mean, eight win seasons back-to-back -back years. So you, you've been in some tight ball games. Last year, they feel real good about themselves. They beat Clemson. They beat Penn State. 
the two teams that were, were right there. I mean, yeah. Penn State could have been in the playoff, probably should have been in the playoff. Clemson wins the national championship. They're the only team to beat Clemson last year. So uh, I just think they got to take that next step. Coach Narduzzi trying to recruit the players to play at that level. We're now joined by Youngstown State head coach Bo Pelini, Coach Robert Lee, Dustin Fox with you. What was the message to the team at halftime? How do you get this thing going in the second half? Well, we got to play better. We got to, you know, offensively, we took ourselves out of a couple of drives and we were moving the football. And uh, defensively, we just, you know, we got we got pushed around a little bit up front. And at the end of the day, we got to play better. You know, our fundamentals, I, I didn't like, we had guys in position. We didn't tackle very well. And our fundamentals weren't what they need to be. Coach, thank you for the time. Thanks. Bo Pelini, the head coach of Youngstown State in his third season as well. I thought it was interesting, Coach Narduzzi said to the media this week, he said one-fourth of Youngstown State's two deep are kids from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And he said, these kids are going to come out on fire. They want to be in that jersey that you're wearing, that Pitt jersey. They want to prove that they should be playing here at Heinz Field, and Pitt has done a good job sort of suppressing that so far. They have, and I think it's, you know, you have to look at just the Pitt roster as a whole. I mean, they're, they're more talented than they were in 2015. They're certainly more talented than they were in 2012. And so Coach Narduzzi, now in his third year in this program, has finally got his system uh, to, to a point where he feels comfortable. Maybe not so much system, maybe bad words, because it's more about culture, right? You, you develop that culture. Uh, you, you do have a new offensive system, so I should say that. But uh, Coach Narduz is doing a good job, and he's recruiting his guys. They always say about the third or fourth season at a program, that's when you really start to see the fruits of your labor. When you're out on the road recruiting all these kids, you get your guys into the program, and then they start to play. And so a lot of the guys the coach has been on the road getting, uh, now they're starting to play a little bit, and, and certainly it shows 21 nothing here in the first half. Kessman's kick away to start the second half. Taken five yards deep in the end zone and a touchback. Well, this is sort of an appetizer if Pitt can go on to win this game for the main course over the next two weeks. This is like some mozzarella sticks as you get ready for that main entree. Penn State, number six in the country, Oklahoma State, and then you have to get into some ACC play before you take on Rice and then you go back into the ACC for the rest of the season. They've got a, they've got a tough... You know, finish up to the season two, Vatek, and then at Vatek, you know how, how tough it is to play in Blacksburg, and then they get Miami here at home. Pitt is in the ACC Coastal Division. The Atlantic Division is the division with Florida State, Clemson, and Louisville. Wells, good run up the middle for McCaster. And a good start to the second half for YSU to the 37. As you mentioned, one of Pitt's shining moments last year was a huge 42-39 win over rival Penn State. And they had to come back in this ball game. They get down a couple scores early in the game. It was a shootout back and forth. Heinz Field was rocking. There's your touchdown that puts you ahead. Of course, there's lots of action between both these teams. And next week in Happy Valley, one of the most intriguing matchups in college football. Pitt lineman Keyshawn Camp is injured. They're tending to him, and we'll take a timeout. We are the TV Doctors of America, and we may not know much about medicine, but we know a lot about drama. From scandalous romance to ridiculous plot twists. <gasps> Son? Dad. We also know you can avoid drama by getting an annual checkup. So we're partnering with Cigna to remind you to go see a real doctor. Go, no, and take control of your health. It could save your life. Doctor poses. Dad. Cigna, together, all the way. Just underway, third quarter, Keyshawn Camp, the lineman, did walk off the field. He's being tended to on the bench. It was a 12-yard gain for YSU on a first down to the 37-yard line. Changing the play at the line. McCaster, the deep back. It's a handoff for McCaster. Stood up, a positive gain to the 41-yard line. 
YSU did not struggle to move the ball in that first half, particularly passing the ball. They actually averaged more yards per play than Pitt did. They only ran half as many plays, and they didn't score any points out of it. Yeah, they're moving the football. They're having success. Uh, certainly, you mentioned the passing game. The running game's been so-so. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had have have a couple sacks that have, have hurt you, but overall, you got to feel good about moving the ball. you got to get some points on the board, though. Mm -hmm. The running back out of the backfield has been a particularly effective pass play for the Penguins as well. Wells back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket. And he'll throw for nobody. Once again, nobody within about 20 yards of that pass. Coach Narduzzi is on the field screaming either at an official or one of his, his own guys. But you're right, Hunter Wells. Gonna play action, pass it back there. Pressure's right there. So he's trying, he's obviously outside the pocket, just getting away the football but running for his life, which is a little bit of a surprise because it's one of the strengths of this Youngstown State offense is the offensive line. You got three or five starters back from a year ago. Best of the bunch, left tackle Justin Spencer, preseason first team selection, yeah. all Missouri Valley Football Conference. Wells throws the swing pass, McCaster dropped it. Wasn't gonna get the first down anyways in all likelihood, YSU will have to punt. So first down run and then three plays and a punt. Again, a perfect way to start the second half for Pitt and their defense, which has been reeling from a season ago. They have to be feeling pretty good the way they've come out in this game, keeping the shutout going. Only thing we really haven't seen from Pitt today is a Quadri Henderson highlight moment. He's back at the 15-yard line to receive the punt of Mark Schuler. Don't think you'll get a chance here as it bounces out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Get a look at Quadri Henderson. He's doing it all for this Pittsburgh offense. Let's take a look at what he's done. In the reverse. Had multiple carries on the afternoon. This shows elusiveness. How about the speed? This is the wiggle you want out of a, a guy you're going to hand the football off to on, on some of these jet sweeps and reverses. Seven carries for 63 yards. The long of 17 right there. That's what he brings to this offense. 2,000 all-purpose yards from a season ago. The only other Pitt Panther to do that, that Tony Dorsett. He's pretty good. He wasn't too bad. Brown caught by Hall. Short gain out past the 25 to the 28. You mentioned that yards per carry. Henderson averaged 10 and a half yards a carry last year. Such a proud program here at Pitt. I live in Canton, Ohio, and all those guys are my neighbors. <laughs> they are some terrific, terrific players. Yeah, Dor Dorsett, Ditka, Dan Marino. So Larry Fitzgerald, Larry greats. Fitzgerald one day, by yes, the way. Yes, he will be there as well. Running over the left side for a first down to the 35-yard line. Darren Hall. Certainly some of the all-time greats, not only in college football, but the mm -hmm. NFL played their college football here at Pitt. Workmanlike effort so far, 21-0 here early in the third quarter. Pitch left. It looks like Olison is back in the game. Good sign for the Panthers after he went out hurt in that first half. He takes it out past the 40. Number 70, Brian O'Neill, one of the best offensive tackles in football. Get out in front of this to lead the convoy. Look at that. Just, just push a little corner out of the way. And he's got to keep an eye on as you, as you go through the college football season. But they lost a couple guys to the NFL on that offensive line. But Brian O'Neill, he has the chance to not only be drafted, but he could be a first or second round pick. Former tight end was a second team all ACC pick last year. A three year starter. And still just a junior Brown play action. Incomplete intended for Jester Wea, who has not caught a ball yet today. You mentioned O'Neill, former tight end. Last year, one of the, the only guys in the entire country on the offensive line who scored touchdowns, got in the end zone a couple times, the big boy. 
almost had a couple, can't. couple passing yeah. attempts. And no doubt. I mean, he is a, he's a very, very athletic guy at the left tackle position. All ACC last year, 25 career starts. I was talking to Coach Peterson, his offensive line coach yesterday. He thinks he, he could ha really have a chance to be special at the next level. Inside pass is caught by French. His first catch of the game, and he's got a first down out to the 48. Maurice French caught 12 balls a season ago, a sophomore. Now, some people think that Maurice French has the chance to be just like Quadri Henderson in terms of the role he has in this offense. Only had 12 catches last year, got the end zone twice. But now this year, he's probably going to be that third wide receiver. Got a lot of speed. New Brunswick, New Jersey. Olison cuts back, spins forward across midfield of the 46. Yeah, for a big man, Roger Olison's six foot two, 230 pounds. But for a guy of that size to be able to show that that elusiveness, the, the ability to cut back, and you saw that spin move, pushing the tempo here. Olison gets away from Powell. Cannot get away from Armand Delabade, Youngstown State's leading tackler last year. West Allegheny High School, Imperial, Pennsylvania, his hometown. Delabade's grandfather was actually referenced by Pat Narduzzi earlier in the week. Same name as Armand Delabade, the football player, a longtime pit booster. He had a chance to, uh, to talk to Carl Perlini about Delabade. He said, the guy never makes a mistake. And that's some high praise from a coach named Carl Pellini. I mean, he, he knows about defense, and to have a guy out there say he never makes a mistake, he's always where he's supposed to be, it's pretty impressive. All-conference selection last year. Brown, all sorts of time. Broken up, incomplete. Good play there by Avery Larkin. It's not a very good throw here for Max Brown. There's going to be some pressure from Youngstown State. He steps up in the pocket. Does a good job stepping up. But he throws that football behind his intended target. He's trying to get Morojalopes. For the first time today, Pittsburgh will punt. Fifth year senior Ryan Winslow, a four year starter at the punting position at his own 41 yard line. Trying to pin YSU deep, fair catch called for and made at the 10 yard line. YSU still down three touchdowns with just over 10 minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Mike and I are both veterans, both served in the Navy. We bought our first home together in 2010. His family had used another insurance product, but I was like, well, I've had USAA for a while. Why don't we call and check the rates? It was an instant savings, and I should have changed a long time ago. I used to love going to sports bars for honey barbecue chicken, but now I'm doing the dad thing. So we go to DQ for the Honey Barbecue Glazed Chicken Strip Basket. It's got 100% all white meat chicken strips tossed in my favorite honey barbecue glaze for a sweet and smoky punch of flavor. Plus, I get Texas toast, fries, and ranch. I like this dad thing. I like this blizzard thing. The sauced and tossed Honey Barbecue Glazed Chicken Strip Basket, only at DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. Enjoy $2 Oreo frappes and more during happy hour. Pitt leads YSU 21-0 early third quarter, and there's former Pitt Panther James Conner, who now plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Over 3,700 career rushing yards and 56 touchdowns. And that's not the most notable part of his story. Yeah, no doubt. is a cancer survivor. The story well documented. Missed the 2015 season. Comes back last year with just a terrific campaign. YSU backed up deep in its own territory, and it'll get deeper here as McCaster is tackled for a loss. Terrific career on the field for Connor. Second really only to Tony Dorsett in all the rushing categories. <laughs> yeah, he's a special one. And, you know, they share the same facilities as the Pittsburgh Steelers, and you always wonder how the relationships would go between the pit players, the college players, and the pro players. And I was talking to some of the guys on the staff yesterday, and, and Coach Tomlin has been very, very interactive with all the young kids on the pit football team. So they had a chance firsthand to get to know James Conner, and no surprise, they end up selecting him in the third round.
back to pass. Throw into the flat is caught by McKester and tackled immediately out past the 10 yard line. You know, Mike Tomlin, who I had a chance to play for in 2006 before he became a head coach when we were in Minnesota together, he's a, he's a terrific coach, but he's also, he's one of those guys that players can respond to and really gravitate towards. He's great with young people, and that's the thing that I learned about Mike Tomlin, and certainly the, the coaches at Pitt have been grateful uh, to Coach Tomlin, who has been you know, influential in talking to kids, inspiring them. You know, sometimes, sometimes some kids step out of line, and Coach Tomlin won't, won't fear uh, walking down the hallway and you know, kind of kicking him in the butt sometimes. Wells throws deep far side for Bailey. He's got it out past the 35 for a first down. Big play for YSU as they try to start a comeback. Well, if they're going to start a comeback, they're going to need some more of this explosive offense. And here you see Alvin Bailey on the outside wide open. Again, working against. Jazzy Stocker, the safety who's rotating in there with Bryson Garner, they're both playing at safety because Jordan Whitehead is out. He's suspended for this game. The All-ACC safety is out. And so they're going to take advantage of that matchup. Alvin Bailey, one of the fastest guys on the entire Youngstown State team to transfer in from Florida, had a terrific season last year. He's a big play guy, and they need more of that type of offense to get them back in this game. 25-yard gain and a first down. Low snap. Well, stands in, throws down the middle for the big tight end. He's got it across midfield. Kevin Raider having a big game to the 40-yard line. Well, you knew at some point Youngstown State was going to say, we can't run the football. There's just too many guys in the box. We're not as physical as those guys. And so what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to take some shots down the field to get us back in this game. There again, Kevin Raider, the guy who made the big play in the Eastern Washington game that po uh, put them in the national championship. So now two big plays back to back. Let's see if Pittsburgh here on first down inside pit territory can keep it going. So the 39 Raider four catches 85 yards today. That was a gain of 22. Turner running room up the middle breaks it to the far side and a first down. Christian Turner the true freshman to the 25. Jay Montgomery said this is going to be a surprise player for Youngstown State, a true freshman out of Cincinnati LaSalle. Played a couple state championship games. How about the physical nature of that run, finishing it off at the end? You know, for a young freshman who's not the biggest guy, he's 5'10", 190, in that same mold of Jody Webb who you had last year, they wore the exact same number, number 20. So some Youngstown State fans maybe think Jody Webb just came back for another season. No, it's a, it's a true freshman back there. His name is Christian Turner. He'll get the handoff again. And spun down after a short game to the 22. LaSalle plays in an extremely difficult league in Cincinnati, the Greater Catholic League, against schools like Archbishop Moeller and St. X and Elder. They are a smaller school, uh, but Christian Turner used the big time competition. The thing about Christian Turner as well is he can catch the football out of the backfield. And he played some receiver in high school too because they had so much depth at that position so early in his career they moved around so that's one of the things they love about him his versatility in the backfield. YSU has got to score a touchdown on this drive they face a second down just outside the 20. And a throw into the near corner incomplete intended for Isaiah Scott broken up nicely by Avante Maddox. That's the Avante Maddox that Pitt wants to see. He's a senior. He was picked on quite a bit last year. He's got the C on his jersey because he's a captain. And they need plays like this from Avante Maddox. How about this terrific coverage here? The ball comes in, you gotta play the football. You see it coming, he knocks it away, gets another PBU, led the team in INTs last year and PBUs, but he was picked on from time to time. The thing they say about him, he's always smiling. It doesn't matter, and I can attest to this as a quarterback, you're out there on an island, okay, and, and you get tested you got to have a short memory, and they hope that he has a nice bounce back season. Wells stands in on third down all sorts of time. Wells flushed out to the right. Wells throws into the end zone. Incomplete. Patterson was there. He could have caught the pass perhaps, but Raider went for the catch and couldn't make it. I'm not sure who it was intended for, because Raider had it right in his hands. This, this football should be caught. I think if Raider lets yeah. Patterson catch that, he definitely catches the pass. Yeah. Raider had a little more difficult catch. You know what, partner? I think you're right. I think it was intended for 
Damon Patterson, Patterson, excuse me. And then Raider just ends up being there. He's like, all right, well, what am I going to do? Not catch the yep. ball. So he goes up and tries to make an attempt. Huge play, fourth down. YSU will go for it down by three touchdowns. They'll call a timeout. Key play here. They'll call a timeout. The play clock was down to three. And Coach Pellini knows how valuable those timeouts are as the play clock was winding down. But the biggest play of the game coming up. We come back 21 0. <laughs> Discover card. I'm not a customer, but I'm calling about that credit scorecard. Give it? Oh, sure. It's free for everyone. Oh, well, that's nice. And checking your score won't hurt your credit. Oh! I'm so proud of you. Well, thank you. Free at discover.com slash credit scorecard, even if you're not a customer. I'm so alive. I'm so alive. I'm so alive. You can make it on a wish if you want to. You can make it on a wish if you want to. Take advantage of exceptional lease and finance offers today. Coach Bo Pelini's team facing the biggest play for the Penguins so far in this game. This will be the ninth play of the drive. It's fourth down and six. YSU trails 21 to nothing. What do you like for a play call here? Well, the thing that's been most effective for Youngstown State today has been finding a running back out of the backfield. You know, they missed the one on the second drive of the game, drop pass, and they had a flag. I'm looking right now, Tevin McCaster, number 37, who's in the backfield next to Hunter Wells in the pistol set. See if pit safeties can man to man cover the running back and tight end in the backfield. Wells pressures on throws. It is caught for a first down Avon Bailey inside the five yard line. Big time throw by Wells. That yeah, best throw of the day for Hunter Wells. No doubt about it. They keep the running back and H back in the backfield as max protection. And then they find Alvin Bailey on a little corner route in between two defenders. Dane Jackson is coming over late. A rare instance where Pitt's caught in zone coverage. And Youngstown State takes advantage. First and goal from the three. Wells now over 200 yards passing. Hunter Wells outside as a wide receiver, new quarterback. Nathan Mays, the backup, is spun down at the one yard line. He fumbled the ball late. Was he down? And if you're Nathan Mays, that is not the impression you want to make coming out on your first play of the game. There's an injured player as well for Pitt. It's Avante Maddox. Oh boy, that's not a good sign. Mays, a third year sophomore from Urbana, Ohio. He's down, his elbows down there. Yeah, he's down. And luckily for Youngstown State, they'll retain possession. You know, Nathan Mays is a guy who has really competed for the starting job, has been around for a couple seasons here, and they really want to get him involved in some capacity. They want to keep him interested. So he's the backup quarterback here as Hunter Wells is a senior. They expect Nathan Mays to probably be the, the starting quarterback next year. But it's interesting, they kept Hunter Wells in the game as like a decoy. They throw him out near the, the, the sideline. Oh, Pelini, the Youngstown coach, was checking on Avante Maddox. We mentioned that Wells was started last year way down the depth chart, third or fourth string. He wasn't sure he was going to stay with the team. He ended up leading them all the way to the title game. Ricky Davis, a player who started earlier in the year, is still on the team, a senior. He's actually listed as a wide receiver now, as Wells has seized the starting job. Mm -hmm. I think they decided they wanted to be more of a uh, a balanced team on offense, pro style of offense. There was a time where I think they wanted to go more with that spread and, and have more of an athletic guy play the position. It just didn't work out for him. And Hunter Wells is, is clearly a pocket passer. He has fit the mold of what they want to do, and they've had some su 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 success, if I could spit it out, behind Hunter Wells. McCaster. Is he in? Yes, he is. Tevin McCaster, one yard touchdown run, and it's 21 to 6. And that was the drive YSU needed. Confidence builder, get in the end zone. No doubt. To be able to capitalize and finish the drive, this is exactly what they had to do. They fake the handoff to, to Bailey, who comes across. 
And then Tevin McCaster just pushes into the end zone. This Youngstown State team has some fight. They've been in games where they've been down before. They've come back. They were down 14 points to Eastern Washington and come back to win that football game. So there's no doubt. They feel like they can they can make a push here in the second half. That was a big drive. 90 90. yards. Oh my goodness. 11 plays, <laughs> 90 yards, 522 off the clock. And on the board for the Penguins, on for the extra point, Zach Kennedy, 39 for 40 on PATs last year. Missed the field goal earlier in the game. This one is good. 444 left to go in the third quarter. Pittsburgh leads Youngstown State 21 to 7. Busy, busy weekend of college football starting in the ACC, among other conferences. Wake Forest and Syracuse both easy wins. BC, late field goal to beat Northern Illinois. Clemson all over Kent State. See some of the other scores going on today. On the next page will be a game with some interest. North Carolina in a dogfight with California. BC on the road in DeKalb taking on Rod Carey's Huskies. You know, Rod Carey's team is always going to be a tough team to beat. Boston College pulls it out late. There's a game in Atlanta tonight. Two of the top three teams, one of the oh. greatest games that's ever opened a college football is, season. Is there a big game tonight? <laughs> I hadn't heard about it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. One of the biggest games we've seen in, I don't know, a decade? An opening weekend. It's an amazing matchup tonight between two of the blue bloods when it comes to college football. Look at that. Since 2010, four national titles combined. They don't lose. They, these teams don't lose. 51 weeks at number one. That's one of the most amazing stats to me. That's incredible. There's only about 13 weeks in a season. Incredible. Nick Saban and Former assistant Jimbo Fisher, we saw that feature at halftime. Terrific work there. Big game tonight in Atlanta. Kennedy kicks it away. End over end kick right down the middle of the field. Quadri Henderson, six yard line. Far side 15, cuts up field to the 20 and good coverage by YSU, although he does spin forward to the 25. Has to be considered a victory to stop him at the 25 yard line. He averaged over 30 yards a return last year. Now, if you're Pitt, this is a two touchdown game. Still two score game with about four and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. But Pitt has not done much over the last quarter or so of game time. Certainly can't take your foot off the gas at this point. YSU building a little bit of momentum. Max Brown, the USC transfer, hands it off for Olison. And submarine short of the 30 yard line. After a gain of four. You know, we talk so much about the running game of Pittsburgh, and obviously we're going to, but we haven't seen this man, number 85, Jester Wea, the leading receiver, receiver from a season ago. He's got the most big play potential. He's an NFL draft prospect, and we haven't seen him at all with Max Brown. That's something to keep an eye on as you go, because if Pitt's going to have any success in the next couple weeks, Jester Wea, he's going to have to make some plays. That 24 yards per catch was second in the country. 10 touchdowns as well. Olison, big hole right side. Olison, good tackle by Jalen Powell to prevent a bigger gain. He does pick up a first down of the 42. How about this hole? I mean, you're not even getting contact until the second level. And you run into Jalen Powell. Good tackle to get him on the ground, but but boy, Olison's running 12 yards without being touched. I just think that Pittsburgh's starting to wear down this Youngstown State team up front. You know, you lost two guys to the National Football League last year on that on that defensive line, and right now you've got a lot of new guys who are just getting worn down. Olison dancing his way through the hole on the right side of the 45, again a gain of three. You mentioned those two <laughs> terrific defensive ends. Derek Rivers, a third round pick of the Patriots. He was actually their first pick in the draft. He was in the third round. Avery Moss, fifth round of the Giants. 26 sacks between them last year. It's tough to replace that, that sort of production. And not only that, I mean, they lost the leadership of those guys up front. I mean, those guys were the heart and soul of that defense. You knew that you had to run up the middle. You couldn't get on the edge with those guys. I mean, those guys are bona fide NFL prospects who will probably start in the NFL. Unfortunately, Derek Rivers is out for the season with an ACL tear. Back to Olison. 
Conservative game plan here. will set up a third down at the 45. No gain on the play. Well, this is what you want to see if you're coaching Nardu Narduzzi. Third and seven. They've been running the ball so effectively. But here's where Max Brown has got to make some plays. They call it the money down. You're going to put the football in Max's hands here. Talk about Jester We Haven't seen him yet at all. All these running plays you want to see on the outside. Can some receiver step up here and make a big play? There has not been a receiver targeted more than twice. And look at this set. I mean, you get you got all these guys bunched up here in the middle. At some point, these guys are going to disperse. Brown pressures on. He sacked. And he fumbled the ball. He falls onto the 29-yard line. Faison Chapman with a huge sack, and Pitt will be forced to punt. You know, Faison Chapman's a guy who's replacing Derek Rivers and Avery Moss. Comes off the outside. Nobody even blocks him. For a guy who has had two tackles in his career, that's a nice little burst off the edge. And think about who he's working against. That's Brian O'Neill, the left tackle who we highlighted earlier. The NFL prospect, great play from Chapman. Winslow to punt it from his own 15-yard line. The tide is turning in this game in front of a quiet Heinz Field crowd. Good high spiraling kick. Fair catch called for and made at the 23-yard line by Jake Coates. And Youngstown State down by 14 now, coming off a 90-yard drive, goes back on offense. Flag is down, back near the line of scrimmage. Number 53 offense, defense. Post scrimmage kick enforcement, 10 yard penalty. The senior team will keep the ball. First down. YSU just marched 90 yards for a score. Very impressive. 11 plays. It was capped because he had some big plays. Alvin Bailey. And then a couple runs. You get the freshman in there. Christian Turner, number 20. And then this was a nice play here again from Alvin Bailey. So two plays from Bailey. And then you finally get Tevin McCaster to cap off the drive. And all of a sudden, it gave a little bit of life to the Youngstown State sideline. Bo Pelini's over there feeling good about themselves. Like, OK, guys, you've been able to move the ball. Then all of a sudden, your defense senses, OK, we've got a little bit of life here. They get a stop. You get a punt. Now you're, you're pinned back because of the penalty, but you still you got it from your, your, your real first stop of the game. And now your offense with some momentum to see if they can carry it over. Long field to go here from the 12-yard line. Keeping it on the ground. Out past the 15 to the 17, Tevin McKester. He had a huge game against Eastern Washington in the semifinals. 154 yards and three touchdowns. Had 11 touchdowns last year to the junior from nearby Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Robert, I've done a lot of these FCS, FBS games early in the season. And you talk to all these coaches at the FCS level. And one of the things that they'll tell you is that the goal in this game is to get it to be a one-score game in the fourth quarter. If you can have it be a one-score game some point in the fourth quarter, you feel happy about it because you got a chance. And, Final and, minute and of the third quarter. And they're here. approaching the fact that, hey, listen, they get some points on this drive. Could get interesting. Nice hole up the middle for McCaster. Spins his way forward for a first down to the 30. And this pit crowd getting a little uneasy here <laughs> as YSU starting to assert itself in the final minute. Now, Devin McCaster, former walk on at Youngstown State, running with some aggression here to finish off the run. This is a guy last year who had to split carries with Jody Webb and Martin Ruiz, both of whom had 1,000 yards. But Tevin McCaster somehow found the end zone 11 times last season. And right now, he's running with a lot of confidence for this Youngstown State team as they are headed to a big fourth quarter. Youngstown State got a little momentum. 21-7, Panthers. HBO Now. I'm in a dream. But in my dream. Never wait to watch the most talked about shows and more of the biggest and latest hit movies. You can stream them all the same time as they air on TV. So you can watch the biggest premieres on time on all of your devices.
You ready to man up now? HBO Now. Stream free for one month. No cable package required. Not a yes, sir. Not a follower. Fit the box, fit the moan. Have a seat in the foyer. Take a number. I was lightning before the thunder. Lightning and the thunder. Thunder, thunder. Feel the thunder. Lightning and the thunder. Thunder. Youngstown State, the Penguins had the only score of the third quarter and have pulled to within 21 to 7 against Pittsburgh. Robert Lee, Dustin Fox with you from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. YSU 123 yards in that third quarter. Pittsburgh had 38. And YSU's got the ball back with a first down. Play action. Wells, all sorts of time, throws deep down the middle. Nice catch out short of midfield at the 48 yard line. It's made by Damon Patterson. Damon Patterson, a big play guy last year. Only had 20 catches, but nine of those catches went for 28 yards or more. So you know if, if number four is going to catch the football, it's going to be a big play. Pittsburgh all time, 14 and one versus FCS opponents. But we all remember in 2012 right here, they lost to Youngstown State. And I think a lot of Pitt fans remember that too. Every time they play the uh, the Penguins, there's a little bit of an uneasy feeling, I think, coming from Panther fans. These schools separated by just over an hour of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. 18-yard gain. McCaster starting to feel it. Big hole. Tevin McCaster first down inside the 40. YSU is starting to march the ball down the field. McCaster, I'm, I'm telling you, this guy runs with a purpose. Great cut there to get a couple extra yards at the end of the run. The, the thing you don't want to do is allow a Bo Pelini team a little bit of confidence confidence in the fourth quarter late in the ball game because they will come back and they can find ways to scrap and claw to win football games or at least get them back in position to make it a football game. If Youngstown State caps off this drive, it's going to get real dicey mm. here. The pressure will really ratchet up on the FCS Panthers. Excuse me, FBS Panthers. McCaster stopped this time for no gain. Youngstown State averaging over seven yards of play in this game. And they've controlled this second half, even though they're still down by two touchdowns. See the numbers for McCaster. He had a one-yard touchdown run in the third quarter. YSU's only score of the game. YSU 12-4 a season ago, ranked number eight in the preseason coaches poll in FCS. This will be the only FBS team they play all year. Wells stands in, throws near side, incomplete. Intended for Samuel St. Surin. I think an interesting dynamic of these FBS versus FCS games. These kids, as we look back at this play, these kids from YSU, they want to win the FCS championship, but they know there's nothing that's going to get them as much pub as beating Pittsburgh today. Oh, it's huge. It's a great opportunity. And, you know, one of the things we've talked about a lot is Especially in this game in particular, a lot of these guys from YSU, they grew up right around Pittsburgh, around Youngstown. So, you know, Pitt's the premier uh, 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 school to go to in this area. So if you didn't end up at, at Pittsburgh, you end up at YSU. So now you get a chance to play a school that maybe didn't recruit you or overlooked you. Third and long. Good pressure from Pitt. Well, stands in, throws, incomplete. Broken up, intended for Raider. Broken up by Bryson Garner. We talked about Bryce, Bryson Garner early in the ball game. Coach Conklin said they want to see how this guy holds up. Didn't play last year. He was a red shirt. They wanted to see how he was going to play in coverage against some of these big tight ends. So far in his ball game, he's made some plays. And, and obviously these guys, Bryson Garner and Jazzy Stocker, are vying for playing time because Jordan Whitehead is out in this game. So terrific play there on third down. And how about this? YSU going to go for it. Fourth and ten. Wells out of the shotgun. Nope, pooch kick. And he nubs it. It's taken by an up back and heading the other way for Pitt across midfield. Inside the 30. Still on.
on his feet. Jazzy Stocker inside the 10. What a strange play. You know, sometimes you, you get burnt for being a little too cute, right? The quick kick, not deep enough, doesn't get protection, and all of a sudden Jazzy Stocker finds himself in position to take this nearly to the house. Hunter Wells tries to do all he can to, to stop him, and not, at the end, he... It was blocked yeah. by James Folston Jr., and then returned 66 yards by Stocker. That couldn't have backfired any worse. What Youngstown State was trying to do is they wanted to they wanted to keep Pitt in their defense. They didn't want them to have anybody back deep, and so they try the quick kick and it backfires. Brown under center, first and goal, handoff Olison, and he is stopped after no gain. Boy, what a turn of events! You know, Youngstown State's going in to potentially score, and here you are, you flip the field. Pittsburgh, if they score here, it's a, it's a three-score game, and the game's probably over. Mm -hmm. Very strange turn of events there. Fourth and ten. Could have gone for it, you know, with a conventional play. Instead tried the quick kick. It was blocked. It's returned all the way almost to the end zone. And now the game's hanging in the balance, as you said. It's all a sin. Good job by the D-line of YSU again. It'll be third down. As pleased as Pat Narduzzi was at halftime, I don't think he's going to be as pleased at the end of the game, even if they win. Well, I think he'll take the win regardless because he knows what lies ahead. But you're right, the second half was a tail two halves. I mean, first half much better, uh, especially on defense. Olison, the lone setback. Play action. Covered well, a sack. Wesley Thompson, first career sack, redshirt freshman from Boardman, Ohio. Getting some pressure coming right up the middle. And you got a bunch of new, new faces on that defensive line. Thompson hasn't played a lot. In there for a player, Savon Smith, who's out with a concussion. Yeah, no doubt, and so you have a chance here. Big kick coming up for Pittsburgh. Really, that drive only took about a minute or so. So not a lot of time came off the clock. Kessman will be called upon. His kick hits the upright, it's no good. YSU dodges a bullet, and they'll get the ball back down, 21-7. Twists and turns here in the fourth quarter at Heinz Field. Pitt maintains a two-touchdown lead. This house says to me, we're ready to have kids, and who cares if it's over budget? <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, this is where they found the body. What body? Bodies, plural. Snap into a Slim Jim! How many movies did you watch last weekend? 932. How did you watch 932 movies? We robots do not require food nor sleep. Indeed. Robots are made to sort through thousands of movies. People aren't. That's why Tribeca Shortlist offers great movies curated by people for other people. Pitt coach Pat Narduzzi, his team has been shut out in the second half while Bo Pelini's team has gathered momentum. They get the ball back 21-7 with over 10 minutes left to go. Bobbled the ball. Bailey trying to get to the edge. Bailey a good gain out of bounds just shy of the 30-yard line. So after that disastrous quick kick, really they didn't lose anything other than a little bit of time and about 50 yards of field position. It really is amazing. Get a look at this play. Bailey's going to bobble it. Somehow corrals it and is able to pick up the first down. We're getting nine yards, excuse me. Second in short coming up. Nearly gets the first down. But you're 100% right. It's amazing. They escaped that. It's a, it's a miracle. that They, they gift-wrapped that to Pitt, and Pitt comes away with zero points. Pitt started that drive from the five-yard line. Wells throws. Tipped. And incomplete, intended for Alvin Bailey. Time now, an enemy of Youngstown State. Just over 10 minutes to go. Keyshawn Camp, who was injured earlier, tipped that pass. The coach was telling us earlier in the week that he, uh, he's got a chance to be pretty good. 
highly recruited kid. Had a nice spring. Real good fall camp. So redshirt freshman, good looking redshirt freshman. YSU facing a third and one. Not out of the realm of possibility. They would go for it on fourth down. Wildcats set with Nathan Mays in there, quarterback. Running left first down. And Turner picks up good yardage out past the 40. Hey, I've been very impressed with the one-two punch of Youngstown State at running back. Tevin McCaster bringing that little bit of thunder. And then you bring in the freshman, Christian Turner. They, obviously, they go to the wildcat position. Nathan Mays at quarterback. They bring Turner in motion. Jet sweep across the formation and certainly picks up the first down. YSU, which lost a yard rushing in the first half, has really come alive running the ball. While Pitt has gone in the other direction. Play action. Wells throws into the flat, wide open, caught by his tight end, Raider, and he spun down after picking up another first down into Pitt territory. Hey, Youngstown State is certainly having their way now with this Pitt defense. Youngstown State now with 16 plays of 10 yards or more. Pitt only has eight, so they've doubled up Pitt with big plays. You get a look at the replay, Hunter Wells throws this football. Pretty good throw. Allows his receiver, Kevin Raider, to run with it after the catch. Raider now 100 yards on five catches. That was a 15-yard gain. Nine minutes left to go. Wells in a good rhythm. Stands in, throws. Wide open man, caught Damon Patterson, close to another first down at the 33. YSU's going to want to pick up the tempo here. Clock running, don't want too much time coming off the clock. Low snap, McCaster picks his way forward for a first down to the 30. Now you're right, at some point, Youngstown State is going to have to pick up this tempo. The clock is not your friend being down two scores late in the game against the Pitt team that I would imagine whenever they get the football back, they're going to give you a heavy dose of Quandre Allison and company. The last minute, Youngstown State has run one play. Under eight minutes to go now. Do not want to use timeouts here behind in the game. Three on the play clock. McCaster stops, cuts forward. Good run by Tevin McCaster to the 24. Those terrific instincts from Tevin McCaster. One of the things you can't coach with a running back is just the ability to sense the over pursuit of a defensive line and uh, there on first down, he picks up six yards. Probably would have been a no gain, maybe even a loss had he continued to run outside. Cuts it back. Wow, taking and a long Bo, Bo, time Bo, between Bo plays. Bo acting like he has a lead right now. Long time between plays, four on the play clock. And McCaster is stacked up for a loss of a yard. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't get the the call here. I mean, you're allowing the play clock to go all the way down to three seconds, two seconds, and then you run the football for no gain. So you're not really helping your chances here. Huge third down coming up for this Youngstown State offense. And again, I mean, you got Hunter Wells. He gets in the huddle, but then he looks off to the sideline for a check with me call. You got to have something ready to go here. Once again, down to 10 on the play clock. 6.20 left to go. YSU down two touchdowns. Like, look at the play clock. Five seconds. Wells throwing the wheel route. Has a man and a touchdown. Christian Turner's first career touchdown, 21 to 13. All day, Pitt's defensive backs have had a hard time with running backs out of the backfield, running with the wheel route. 
right there you get the freshman out of the backfield working against Elijah Zeiss the, the money linebacker you know, the funny thing about that play is is that we were talking with coach Conklin this week and he said the thing he likes about Elijah Zeiss he's a former wide receiver moved to linebacker because he's got speed and he's able to run with some of those wheel routes right there boy not with it wide open touchdown Zach Kennedy makes it a seven point game 14 unanswered for YSU Christian Turner pulls the Penguins within seven When I grow up, I want to take old stuff I find and turn it into something amazing. Back then, making the next big thing was a challenge. Today, it's my job. Here at Coke, my team and I recycle cooking oil into renewable biofuels. It's a real challenge finding new ways to create energy, but I think I was born for this. dead have taken command of the sea. I'm searching for a girl. A girl. And a sparrow. Dad! We meet again. An army of dead are coming straight for you, Jack. What do we do? Give the last to die. <laughs> I'm all pirates. They're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean. Complete your collection on digital September 19th on Blu-ray October 3rd. Pittsburgh, which dominated that first half, has watched YSU of the FCS do the same in the second half. Look at those numbers. It's amazing. It, it totally has been a tale of two halves for, for both of these teams. Youngstown State has awoken. They got things going on offense. They were able to find their way into the end zone. Think what this game would be if the Penguins hadn't shot themselves in the foot a couple times with, with some uh, really, really bad penalties that, that killed drives. And now of course, Pittsburgh, they haven't been able to do anything on offense. Henderson from the five. Henderson, submarine at the 30-yard line. Second half, Youngstown State 234 yards, Pitt 32. Well, I think at some point here, you're going to have to let Max Brown throw the football because Youngstown State has, has really settled in on defense. They're smothering the running game in the second half. You haven't been able to move the sticks. And we haven't seen a whole lot of Max Brown uh, from the quarterback position in terms of, of throwing the football down the field. You've got two tremendous playmakers on the outside, and we haven't called their name nearly at all. Wea and Henderson do not have a catch. Henderson has done a lot of running. Brown play action, throws into the flat, caught, immediately tackled. Short gain, Armand Delave there for the stop. Olison on the catch, gain of maybe two. Clock stopped. Just over six minutes to go. Now it's running with under six minutes remaining. So if you're Pitt, how aggressive are you here? You want to keep the clock running, but you also haven't done anything on offense in the second half. You get into what's called a four-minute offense here. You, you want to win the football game, obviously, but you have to. You're in a position where you have to be able to move the sticks. You got to get a couple of first downs here. You want to try and put this thing away. So they had some issues with the clock. It's under six minutes left to go now. And the clock will run with Pitt leading it by just seven. Led 21-0 at halftime. Second down, eight from the feature. Hey, you look, look at the freshman, Bryce Gibson. Man coverage on the outside. He's done a terrific job today. Olison breaking tackles, flag down. Olison out of bounds at the 43-yard line. There is a flag down on the near side of the 32. This may be coming back. If it's on Pitt, this would be Pitt's first penalty of the game. YSU has just four. It was a first down run for Olison. Not a penalty. Much needed first down. 
the point I was making earlier about the corners on the outside for Youngstown State, you've got two new starters. You've got number seven, Bryce Gibson, who's a true freshman. Billy Nico Hurst was playing the nickel last year, who's moved to corner, played a little safety last year as well. They've done a real nice job on two of the best receivers in the entire ACC. Big hole right side, Olison near midfield to the 49, a gain of six. He's got a little bit of chip on his shoulder for a freshman. He's not scared of anybody. Johnstown, Pennsylvania, a little bit east of here. Now the clock running with under five minutes to go. YSU does have two timeouts left. That's Billy Nico Hurst. He played safety the last couple of years. They were in camp. In fact, he was in safety in camp. They moved him to corner the first week of camp, and all of a sudden he's like playing really well for them at cornerback. They're like, he's a, a natural at corner. Brown pressure throws it away. Oh boy. Olison well covered by Gibson. This is that stops the clock, <laughs> and it's third down. Fans getting a little antsy there after that, that throw on second down. They get the sense that uh, Youngstown State could see some momentum here after a big third down stop if they can get it. And if YSU were to get the stop here, they have not really been stopped in this second half. They have been marching up and down the field. I, I would love to see a play action pass here from Pittsburgh. You've just been running the football all day. They're going to go out the shotgun here, but I'm sure everyone on the Youngstown State defense is expecting run. Brown pressured, fumbled the ball. YSU's got it at the 42. Wow. Are you kidding me? Justice Reed, number four. A backup D end. Well, Justice Reed is just working against Jared Jones Smith, who's finally healthy this season, but doesn't do a very good job there on the outside of protecting his quarterback. What he a is a transfer from Florida. Yeah, and that's one of the guys that they've been talking about in camp. They've been really excited about him. He played a little bit for Florida, got a lot of burst off the edge. And here we sit. 14, 21 14, and Youngstown State has the football with the chance to tie this game up. First turnover of the game committed by Pitt from the 42, first and 10. Wells sends Reader his top target today in motion. Shovel pass. Short game. What a like game. I don't like that call. It's a dangerous play. All you need to have happen there is, is a Pitt defender to get to the backfield. And, it breaks up that pass, it could be a devastating play. And now you put yourself at second and ten. Again, I'm, I'm looking at these guys on the outside. Patterson and Alvin Bailey. Man-to-man -man coverage on the outside against Maddox and Dane Jackson. Under four minutes to go here at Heinz Field. Especially up top. Got no help over top. Wells throws the wheel route. He's wide open again. He's going to take it in. Christian Turner touchdown. YSU going back to the well over and over again. 21-20. Same play. There's going to be a little bit of a pick here that's not called. As Maddox comes over top to try and help out on Christian Turner, and he just can't get there. And Christian Turner's off to the race. It shows tremendous speed getting to the end zone. And, folks, if you were watching this game in the first half, you thought this thing was over? This thing is far from over. 42-yard catch for Christian Turner. Second touchdown catch of the fourth quarter. Huge extra point. Zach Kennedy to tie the game. Kick is up, kick is good. Three and a half to go. New ball game here in Pittsburgh. Tied at 21. Christian Turner, two touchdowns late.
one venture card. Unlimited double miles on every purchase, not just airline purchases. Now available in metal. What's in your wallet? Coke Zero is now Coke Zero Sugar, with great Coke taste. Some people were excited to hear the news, some were skeptical. So we're not going to have any branded cups for the late night talk show guests. Because the only thing that will make you believe is trying it yourself. Pittsburgh has only one loss ever against an FCS opponent, and that came against Youngstown State five years ago. FBS schools, both subdivision, they have 85 scholarships. FCS schools have only 63. FBS schools are not supposed to lose to FCS schools. No, they're not, but as we mentioned earlier, every single fan in this building, they're a little leery every time they play the Penguins because in the back of their mind is that 20, uh, 2012 defeat at the hands of the Youngstown State Penguins. So they know how capable they are. And the fact that they were in the national championship game last year, everybody here is well aware of how talented this team is. Big kick by Kennedy cannot be returned. These two teams played two years ago here. Pitt won that game 45-37. And this one's coming down to the wire, too, with three and a half minutes to go. It has started to rain. <laughs> And we're told that more heavier rain, heavier rain, I should say, is on its way here in Pittsburgh. These drives in the second half. Four drives, 21 plays. They missed the field goal, had a fumble, and they've been outscored 21 to zip by an FCS opponent. Coach Narduzzi has to be pulling his hair out right now. Henderson running the jet sweep left. And Henderson picks up a first down out past the 35 to the 37. Well, there are two things that Youngstown State has had a hard time stopping today, and that's one of them. The jet sweep with Quandre Henderson, his speed on the perimeter is something that Youngstown State just has a hard time with. And then the second thing is Quandre Olison. They got to get him going again to try and capitalize on this drive and put some points on the board. If you're Pittsburgh, you want to you want to take this clock all the way down. You want to have a walk-off type of win. You don't want to give Youngstown State any hope, any life to come back in this game. Pitt does have all three of its timeouts. Throw into the flat, short pass to Allison. And tackle, no, breaks the tackle, but a short gain out of bounds. Losing his helmet was Lee Wright. And now a timeout. No, I think Wright has to go out of the game for one play. And Robert, you know, something else to keep an eye on here, the first adversity, rather, that Max Brown's facing as a starting quarterback at the University of Pittsburgh. He, he played at USC last year, transferred over in the offseason. This is his first start in the Pitt offense, was voted captain this summer. But now he finds himself in a ball game, dogfight in week one. Play action. Short pass again. This one's in trouble. He stopped for a big loss. Conservative play call. And a short pass is a big loss on the play. And I think YSU may have just called a timeout. No doubt. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go in the game. You want as, as much time as you possibly can have for your offense, and we know that they need it. Armand Delavade. We'll take a timeout. Two and a half to go, tied up here in Pittsburgh. When you look at the Mercedes-Benz GLC, with its high-tech cameras and radar, contemporary cockpit, 360-degree network of driver assist technologies, and sporty performance, what's most impressive about the GLC? All depends on your point of view. The 2018 GLC, starting at 40,050. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Al has had a rough life. The only time he was picked first was in a police lineup. Every player on his fantasy football team asked for a trade. His only trophy for participation came with an asterisk. But Al feels like a champion because he's eating tasty, protein powered, wonderful pistachios. Here at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, tie game. Youngstown State in Pittsburgh squared up at 21. Max Brown, five out of eight in the second half for nine yards. And facing a third down and 14. 
Robert Lee, Dustin Fox, our entire terrific crew with you from the Steel City where Pitt took a 21-0 lead into the half. YSU has dominated the second half and has tied the game at 21. Pitt facing a third down and 14. Brown pressured, gets away. He's going to look to run for it. He's got a long way to go. He dives. He doesn't get there. He stopped at the 46-yard line, one yard short. That is just a terrific decision from Max Brown to take off and run with this football. And, and how about the effort at the end to try and pick up the first down? I know Coach Narduzzi doesn't love this because that's your quarterback, but he's trying everything with all his might to pick up this first down, and he's put himself in a position here to have a decision. You know, Pat Narduzzi has a fourth and in inches, and it looks like they're going to keep their offense on the field and go for this with an opportunity to win this football game. They've got a hustle. There's only eight on the play clock. They're still in the huddle. They have all three of their timeouts left. Only four on the play clock. They'll have to call a timeout. Have to call a timeout with under two minutes to go. First timeout for Pitt. What's at stake? If you get it, you've got to keep the ball around midfield. If you don't convert, YSU's got it in plus territory. Yeah, the, the reason they're in this position, Robert, is because they had gift wrapped a block punt that put them in field goal range, and then they miss it off the upright. And so they come away with zero points on a drive that started inside the 10 yard line. Very unfortunate for the pit offense. You've got to get points there. They wouldn't even be in this predicament right now had they converted on on that field goal or at least got to the end zone on that drive. They should have ran the football into the end zone, frankly. But they go backwards, end up kicking the, the field goal off the upright. So, And you also have to wonder if they're forced to try a game-winning field goal here late in the game. They have a redshirt freshman kicker who's never made a field goal. Well, and the weather conditions. Yep. I mean, you talked about the rain that's starting to come down here now. On a field that's notoriously hard to kick on. <laughs> Fourth down. Pitt's going to go for it from their own 46. Under two minutes to go. Brown. Jumbo set. Allison in motion. Hands it off. First down. A.J. Davis out to the 48. Boy, how about the confidence of Pat Narduzzi? The biggest play of the game. Who do you give the football to? Not your senior running back, not your junior running back. You give it to a, a, a true freshman in A.J. Davis to pick up the first down, and he does exactly exactly that. Clock will stop with the first down. Each team, check that, Pitt has two timeouts left. YSU has only one. Becomes a little bit of a cat and mouse game with the time now, because there's under two minutes to go, as each team based on what happens on a certain play, will decide if they want to stop the clock or not. Brown, swing pass, Olison. He juggled it. He's going to be tackled for a huge loss inside the 40. Loss of about 10 on the play. They'll give him forward progress, actually, all the way to the 43. Again, the corners for Youngstown State are doing such a good job on the outside with Jester Wea and Quandry Henderson. They're locking them down. And so there's nowhere for the football to go. And so Max Brown is looking down the field, and he's saying to himself, I've got to check this thing down. So he checks it down to Olison. And then great defense as they converge to, to force a second and long, second and 15. So really, really strong performance by the Youngstown State defense late in this game. And this is where the chess match comes into play. Pitt's now letting as much time run off the clock yeah. as possible as they face second and 15. YSU has only one timeout left. Batted, incomplete. Face on Chapman, almost a tipped interception. Flag down. I think you're going to get roughing the passer. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's wow. a big call. That's a big call. Take a look at the pass rush. Max Brown has all day to throw. This is late in the down. Justice Reed hit oh, him well after Justice the ball. Justice Reed, that is, I mean, you gotta, you gotta pull off. That football is long gone, and Reed comes around the outside and just shoves Max Brown to the ground. I mean, that's such an easy, it's right in front of the official. I mean, Coach Pelini's gotta be losing his mind right now. That is an automatic first down on what would have been third down and 15 coming up. Now Pitt at the YSU 42. Now Pitt back into an advantageous situation with two timeouts, 53 seconds left. Brown out of the shotgun. 
He's pressured. Just this read, he gets away. Brown looking to keep it alive. He throws it away. Well, Justice Reed nearly redeems himself with a huge sack right there. Great pressure off the outside. Max Brown able to avoid. Steps up and just able to get the football away. Pitton still, still in just fine position here. Two timeouts, 46 seconds. You probably got to pick up at least 20 yards to put yourself in field goal range, at least in a position. Obviously, the weather conditions are a factor right now. Not the most ideal. The word on Kessman, the kicker, is that he's got a strong leg, but he's inexperienced. Inside pass to Henderson. Ankle tackled at the 36-yard line. Tackle made by Kyle Hedges. Now the clock's running with 30 seconds left. But very conservative here from Pat Narduzzi. It's only 25 seconds left now. Third down, and it's caught, breaking tackles. Maurice French, and he takes it into field goal range with 14 seconds left. Well, Bryson Gibson, number seven for Youngstown State on the outside the corner, has had a terrific game. He's made every play. He's ran stride for stride with every wide receiver on the outside, and on this play, he misses the biggest tackle of the game. He's got to come up and make this tackle. Instead, Maurice French takes it inside the red zone. And now if you're Pittsburgh, you want to run this a couple times. You want to center this baby up and give your kicker the best opportunity to walk off with a winner. They have two timeouts left. They're going to run to the middle of the field, get smacked by a defender. He's down at the 20, the quarterback. They're going to let the clock run down and set up for a potential game-winning field goal of 38 yards. Not sure that's how they drew up that play, but it does get the job done. Well, they lost a couple of yards on the play. Alex Kessman is a redshirt freshman from Clarkston, Michigan. He is replacing Pitt's all-time kicking leader, Chris Blewett. This is his first career game and a chance to play the hero's role. Everybody remembers Blewett from last year as he hit the game winner against Clemson. Victory against the national champs. Boy, what, talk about pressure. Mm. <laughs> Being a redshirt freshman in your first game and have a chance to win it. And also redeem yourself, too. I mean, the kick that he missed earlier off the upright was an easy chip shot. Should have been made. But now it gets a little bit tougher. Game on the line. Rain pouring down. Got the nerves flowing a little bit. I think if you talk to NFL coaches, Heinz Field is acknowledged as one of the most, if not the most, difficult field to kick on in the NFL. Yeah. It's in good shape right now. And this will be for the game. Alex Kessman from 38 yards, straight on. The ball centered up in the middle of the field. YSU has scored 21 unanswered to tie the game. If Kessman makes it, Pitt is victorious. If he misses, we're headed to overtime. The holder is punter Ryan Winslow. Cal Adamitis is the long snapper. For the win from 38 yards out. Timeout. Timeout, Youngstown State. Kessman had it blocked in a sort of half-hearted attempt. Youngstown State will prolong the suspense by calling its final timeout. I just wonder if calling a timeout actually worked. Does it actually freeze a kicker? Sometimes you think as a kicker it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come. You think the timeout's going to come. And then if you don't call it, mm. Well, you just made, now made it uncomfortable for the kicker, especially a freshman. But uh, Bo Pelini is going to take that last time out, put a little bit more pressure on Alex Kessman, the freshman you see in Clarkston, Michigan. Biggest kick of his career. They'll set it up again. A 38-yard attempt from the center of the field. Youngstown State will try to block the kick. 
Out of the hold of Winslow. For the win. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. The kick is no good. He pushed it right. We're headed to overtime. Alex Kessman misses a potential game-winning 38-yard field goal. Just pushes it. Just flat out pushed it. We talked about the turf, the, the footing out there. Not sure how it is. It's a little bit wet. But that's two kicks that now have went off to the right. The first one hit the upright. Now this one, he just pushes wide right. You feel bad for the young man who had an opportunity to, to win the game. Now it's not over. Both teams will get a chance to, to have the football here in overtime. What an opening <laughs> week matchup we got, partner. Didn't look that way at halftime. No, it did not. It looked like it was going to be a blow a blowout victory for the Pitt Panthers. But in the second half, you know, something happened. Bo Pelini went in there and, and lit a fire under his guys. He told us we've got to play better, and that's just what's happened. Well, I also think that you can look at the stats, and you knew that Youngstown State was moving the football. And so he was selling his kids on, hey, look, you're – you're executing. You're just not getting the points. You've, ki you've kicked yourself in the foot a couple times, and, and now you, in the second half, have executed. You've done a great job. How resilient of the Penguins to, to not give up and to put themselves in position here to force an overtime. Just amazing. They'll have the coin toss here. It's been a long time since football season. Dustin, take us through the mechanics and what you <laughs> want to do if you win the coin toss. Well, it's always a, a strategy. I think you want to go on defense first. You want to force that the, the team on offense to you know, turn the football over, make them kick a field goal, because then all of a sudden you've got the advantage on the second drive. Official Jeff Flanagan going over the Festivities here. YSU calls heads. It is heads. It is heads. YSU wins the toss. YSU will logically go on defense first, so they know what they have to do after Pitt has its possession. We'll take a look at our rules. There's your coin toss. Each team, of course, gets one possession from the 25-yard line. No game clock, just a play clock. The interesting part about college football rule is if it goes to a third overtime, you got to go for two. So, could get a little dicey here. I don't think you're making your flight, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not looking as promising no. as it once was. Here we go. First game of the season. Tied at 21. Pitt led this game 21-0 midway through the second quarter. Nothing was going right for YSU, and the Penguins have dominated the second half. Came all the way back to tie the game at 21. Pitt misses two field goals late in the game, including at the buzzer. That could have won the game. And now Pitt back on offense here. They've done very little since halftime offensively. You wonder how conservative they'll be. Because if you turn the football over, I mean, that could be the game. Youngstown State just lines it up and tries to kick a walk-off field goal. Max Brown has not been very good here in the second half. He certainly hasn't had much protection as well. They have not taken any shots down the field. Everything's been right around the line of scrimmage. All a sin. Swarmed under. Louis Jean there to finish him off. The problem with being conservative at this point, when you've got a freshman kicker that has already missed two kicks, I don't know how much you can count on him here in overtime. You, know, you might be saying to yourself, hey, look, we've got to go get a touchdown and not put the pressure back on the kid to go out here at the opposite end of the field with the same weather conditions and try to kick a field goal to, to give us a three-point lead. You know, YSU loading the box here. They're expecting run. Henderson in motion. Another run for Olison. And a marginal gain to the 20. Sets up a huge third down. You wonder, you know, if, if Pitt's able to pick up a few yards here on third down, 
regardless, do they go for it if it's a fourth and short? Very well, Mike. Not sure, as you said, how much Pat Narduzzi yeah. can I mean, count on his kicker right there's now. There's no way Narduzzi has a lot of confidence in Alex Kessman right now. Third down. Max Brown is 15 out of 22 for 122 yards. Mostly dinking and dunking here in the second half. He takes the shotgun snap, throws far side, caught by Olison inside the 15, a first down. It's a great play. Similar play that Youngstown State's been killing the pit defense with all afternoon, finding a backfield, leaking out. Play action pass, finds Olison wide open in the flat, turns it upfield, picks up the first down. Fresh set of downs from the 13-yard line. Overtime here in Pittsburgh, Heinz Field. Olison up the middle. What, what a great tackle by Armand Delavade, the Mike linebacker coming up, knifing in there. They say shoot your gap. You got to see number 42. Armand Delavade shoots in there and knifes down Olison for a little to no gain. Olsen now 21 carries, 91 yards, two touchdowns, both in the first quarter. Has not been quite as effective here in the second half, nor have the Panthers. No gain on the play. Jet sweep, Henderson. Another terrific tackle in the open field by Kyle Hedges. What did Bo Pelini tell us at halftime? He said, number one, They've got to tackle better in the second half. And I'll tell you what, they're not missing a whole lot of tackles. So the message was received at halftime that defensively, they were in position to make the plays, but they've got to come up and get the stops. Back-to-back yeah, -back plays, just terrific stops. Armand Delevade, Hedges, Bryson Gibson, all these guys are making stops right now. Third down and eight. Brown, good protection, throws. What a catch, Jester Wea for the touchdown. Went up and got it. Pitt leads 27-21. First catch of the game. Haven't called his name all day. Pointed out earlier, Jester Wea, the top receiver on this entire class, the leading rec uh, receiver from the season ago. And Max Brown with a beauty. His receiver goes up and gets it. He knows that Jester Wea and six foot three can go up and make a play, but now let's 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 pause. Alex Kessman still has to make this PAT to give him a seven point lead. He is three for three on extra points so far. High snap. Ooh, not a pretty kick, but it, it is, is his confidence right now is rattled. You can clearly see it. So Pitt does score in overtime in its possession. Jester Wea. The 11-yard touchdown catch. And now YSU must score a touchdown and convert an extra point to either tie the game or go for two to try to win the game. He'll get the ball from the 25-yard line. You know, Jester Wee is an interesting guy. Last season, he really burst onto the scene, didn't have a catch at all his first two seasons at Pitt. Last year tore it up at 870 yards, 36 catches, and now he's the go-to receiver for, for Max Brown. A turnover ends the game. Youngstown State must go for it on fourth down if they get that far. McKester, good push by the offensive line, takes it. Still forward, rugby scrum to the 19. <laughs> Down State now over 400 yards of offense against this maligned pit defense from a season ago. Hunter Wells, 18 for 31, 311 yards and two scores. Both of them to Turner. Both in the fourth quarter. McCaster burrows his way over the right side, close to the first down, about a yard short. 
What a great way to start this opening drive for Youngstown State. First two plays, you get nine yards. You got a third and very manageable. Third and about one here. And again, the advantage of going oh, yeah. on defense first, you know you have four downs to get this first down. Exactly. Two plays to get a yard here for Youngstown State. And Tevin McCaster, who's been running with a purpose in the second half, I, I, I would imagine clearly he's going to get the football here. Bailey Patterson lined up to the left. McCaster, first down to the 13 yard line. This pit defense has been on the field a lot since halftime. Watch this cut from Tevin McCaster. See, there's going to be penetration into the backfield right now. Look at that cut right up to the left. He knows he's got to get a yard, picks up about three. Terrific vision and instincts from Tevin McCaster. First down. Fakes the handoff. Wells, all sorts of time. Wells surveying, throws, intercepted! Pitt wins! 28-21! Bryson Garner, the game-ending interception. Bryson Garner is a redshirt freshman getting his first career start because Jordan Whitehead is out suspended. Coaches said they wanted to see how he was going to hold up. I'd say he held up pretty good. What a tremendous play to end the football game, but if you're Hunter Wells, what are you doing? In that situation, you've got to throw the football away. You've got all day. You, I mean, you're throwing that up for grabs. It's on first down. On for, absolutely. So I, I just think a poor decision. I know a guy's trying to make a play, but you're throwing that into coverage. I, I just, I, I question what you're, like, he's got all day to throw. Look at this. And then he gets a man in his face late, but he just throws it up for grabs. There's not even a defense or a receiver in the area. Alvin Bailey's the closest guy, number five, but he doesn't even have a shot. I mean, th there's three pit defenders. A great play from Bryson Garner. What a way to start your your tenure. Interception to end the ball game. So many twists and turns in this game. Pitt 21 straight in the first half. YSU 21 straight in the second half. Yeah. Missed field goals, and then the game-winning interception in overtime. Yeah, tail of two halves, obviously. You know, Pittsburgh's got to be happy to get the win. You want to think you got that 21-0 lead. You get a little fat off that lead. Thinking ahead to Pitts, or Penn State next week and Oklahoma State the week after. Can't be looking ahead. Can't look past the Bo Pelini squad. They don't give up. They fought to the very end. Tons of respect for that group. Listen, they're a tremendous team. They went to the national championship last year. Got to be feeling real good about where they're headed in 2017. Dustin Fox, a pleasure for Dustin. Robert Lee saying so long from Heinz Field with a final score. Pitt 28, YSU 21 in overtime. All games airing on the ESPN networks and streaming live on the ESPN app. To watch this game on replay as well as other games on our family and networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.